Hi everyone, welcome to another pick a card reading. I'm so sorry I have not posted in two weeks but um, I just didn't get a window during the day in order to shoot even one segment of a video. So now um, in case you've noticed I have a new setup. The light looks different because I'm shooting at night. It's more peaceful, it's more calm, it's more stress free. Anyway, so um, based on the title this video is the fifth and final installment in the future spouse series this one covers a channel letter from your future spouse the reason behind this video was um in order to leave you with some kind of hope or some kind of reassurance that your person is out there and in case for some of you your union has been delayed or you're just wondering what's happening then this is their way of saying that don't worry i'm there and you know just giving an explanation of how they feel towards you how they feel about this connection so um without wasting any time let's just begin with the video oh i forgot to mention the first video in case you have not noted in case you have not watched it the first video talks about how who your future spouse is gonna be so that covers their personality traits their um characteristics what they look like the second video talks about how and when you'll meet your future spouse the circumstances of your meeting the third video will talk about daily life with your future spouse so what your daily life will be with them and the fourth video talks about the long-term goals and things you'll achieve or your long-term life with your future spouse i'm gonna link it below all the future spouse videos in case you want to go and take a look at those and this one the final one in the future spouse series is a channel letter from your future spouse so as always we have four letters for you to choose from the first one um i could not find any fancy envelopes or fancy papers so i just like use my felt pens and like made these sappy flower drawings so the first video has like this drawing um, you can go with like the number or you can like go with the flower or anything. The second one is this pink. Um, it's supposed to be a dahlia but <laughs> obviously I have not done it justice so. The third one is this. Mm -hmm. And the fourth letter is this. So um, take as long as you like to choose your letter. You can choose based on numbers or based on the drawing or just the letter that calls to you the most. And I'll get started with letter number one. Hi pile number one. So if you chose this letter with this flower design, then this is going to be your reading. And um, just to give you a little rundown of how this how this um, reading works is I'm going to first open up this letter and read that to you. Um, then we're going to look at some oracle cards to get some idea about this connection, perhaps even your union. Um, it could also give us insight about your person. Then um, we'll move on to your tarot cards to get an idea of like their current energy, how they are, what they are feeling at this moment. Um, what their energy is going to be when they meet you and then the energy of your relationship or your connection. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to just conclude the reading with two cards from the Affirmator's Love and Relationship deck just to see what your relationship would be like with them. Mm -hmm. So let's just open up this letter and take a look at what it has to say. So there we go. It says... My dearest, I know it is hard for you to believe in us given our union has been delayed. But I need you to know that I am on a journey, a very important journey. One day when we are together, I want to tell you about the places I've been, things I've seen. And I want to use those experiences to enrich our life that becomes our forever. But right now I must continue on my journey, a journey that I have to take alone. A journey that will teach me to be a better person, a better parent, but most importantly, a better partner. And once my journey is completed, I promise our union will be beautiful. Till we unite, I want you to know I love you very, very much. 
It is knowing that one day I'll be united with you is what keeps me going, is what keeps me pushing through. Don't lose faith in us. Love you now and forever. Your spouse. Hmm. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to set this aside over here. So, um, just a few things I wanted to mention. That um, while writing this letter, um, agreed that I was like heavily PM PMSing. And that's why maybe I was over overly emotional. But I felt a very heaviness while writing this letter. So, if I have to translate that in like about your person or your future spouse, I have to say that um, this person is not the happiest having to like go on this journey or like complete this quest or something and not choose you but it's something they know is important and the thing about them is that um, I get the feeling that they are very focused people so it's like when they have to do something they want to give it their 100% time and energy and focus so the thing is like they perhaps have to do something that is of vital importance and till they do that they don't feel like they want to have a union with you and the thing about whatever this is that they have to do or this journey they have to embark upon um, they feel like it's more important now because like it mentioned here it would make them a better person a better parent but also a better partner Mm -hmm. I'll get to that a little later, but basically, whatever it is, it's taking their 100% energy, time and devotion. And that is why they're not being able to like be with you because when they are with you, they want to give that same amount of 100% as well. And the thing about this person, when I was writing the letter, I got the vibe that, you know, um, they're constantly striving to be better. You know, like how some people like, it's like never enough but like with them it's like they have a benchmark and although in like your book or like for in terms of like as far as everybody else is concerned they may be like really accomplished or like really good or whatever in their book there's still lots they have to like do mm -hmm. so maybe in some ways they're also a bit of perfectionists you know, so um, that is something to keep in mind. Uh, also, like, I have to say that this gave me, like, the heavy vibes I got. This also made me think of, like, somebody maybe, like, they are in the army. Which is why they have to choose, like, fighting for their country over, like, you know, meeting their spouse and, like, dating or getting married. Because something has come up that is of, that is taking up. Or that is of more importance than like being with you right now so um like for example there's the ukraine war maybe some of you are like from ukraine watching these videos maybe not but um if you are then my heart goes out to you but they really love you but they have this really high moral obligation towards their country or something on the other hand i have another interpretation that this journey could be something very well that is internal like maybe you know they have to like work hard on themselves to become like better people before they meet you maybe like you know they've been through some kind of trauma or something and they feel like you know they have to work on themselves or like maybe like growing up they didn't grow up in the happiest of families maybe their parents were like always fighting so their idea of like marriage and being a good partner is kind of warped and like maybe they're seeking therapy or something in order to like become a normal or a better person or like a better spouse but whatever it is they want to be very good when they meet you they want to they don't want like past baggage or past nonsense interfering in your relationship because like i said they are 100 percent. so it's like whatever they are doing now they want to give it they are everything they don't want to be distracted by you because they know that once they complete that or once they like become the person or the version of person they want to be for you then they'll be able to 100% give their time towards you towards the family you guys make or whatever 
this also gives me like you know great Gatsby vibes in a way because like for example even though Jay Gatsby loved Daisy all along he didn't um he didn't approach her or like you know meet her till he became as rich as Tom mm -hmm. because like he felt like he had to like become a like achieve accomplish a certain amount of money and wealth in order to like give Daisy the lifestyle she deserves or whatever or like you know be able to like be in her circle or be worthy of her so maybe this could be something like that as well maybe they have to focus on their career or something um maybe they're even like shifting to a like another place or something and they have to like integrate themselves into that culture or into that place before they approach you so this could also be somebody from like a different nationality or something mm -hmm. but they have to like finish something before they approach you and their idea is that i don't want my past or something you know catching up or like coming into and like screwing up my future with you you know so for example supposing they didn't have the best relationship with their family or they didn't have like the best childhood growing up maybe they had financial struggles maybe their parents weren't happy they want to finish offload all of that negative baggage become the happy optimistic loving person you deserve and then approach you or like then come into your life and be that spouse or be that person that they feel is worthy for you so yeah this but here it's definitely the pile for those who you feel like you know by now i should be married or by now i should have kids or whatever and this is their way of justifying the delay so in case you know you've chosen this pile and this delay part is resonating with you and you're wondering why it's not happened yet this is perhaps why I hope it gives you some kind of closure or some kind of answers to what you're looking for. But obviously they love you very very much and although it's like you know they are focusing on whatever this journey is on their own or whatever like they are giving it their time you're constantly in their thoughts you know they think about you the minute they have like five minutes of free time they think about you. Mm -hmm. For some of you, you guys even maybe connect in connection like with your higher selves. Like sometimes maybe it's like, you know, you're sipping coffee and then these random thoughts come into your head. That could be like this person communicating with you quietly, you know. Um, so, yeah, that is everything I got from the letter. So I hope it gave you some kind of closure. Now we look at your oracle cards to just get some better idea of like this connection. So, um, the first card is we have soul family with number 36. So this person could very well be from like your soul family. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely um, this person is like I think this your future spouse very well could be your soulmate could be somebody from your soul family from your soul tree so um i definitely feel like you know you'll have like this connection this higher connection so i definitely feel like for many of you guys you guys may be in communication with this person so um Although you're like in this space where you're like wondering, oh my God, why it's not happened yet? Why have I not met my person yet? Or if you know this person, why are they, pro why are they proposing just yet or whatever? Um, I feel like many of you would already kind of know. You know, um, like how soul family people are interconnected in a way. Like your higher selves are always in communication in some way so um especially if this is somebody you know you will have the ability to see them struggling or see them um striving to be better or something you know there's definitely like some kind of connection in that sense but this person is 100 percent from your family this is somebody who it's probably known you for generations as well. And look at the amount of light. 
you know it's like it makes me think that maybe to a certain extent like you know the light is like controlled right now but when you all come together it's like going to explode you know the light is going to be so much more brighter and with the amount of purple i think of the crown chakra which makes me think of spirituality which makes me think that maybe you guys are both very spiritual maybe you guys are spiritually connected and that also makes me think of the fact that you all are in communication so many of you guys would like perhaps already like okay maybe you are in that state of anxiety like oh my god why it's not happened yet but some of you have also those reassuring thoughts that you know what it's going to happen when it happens my person is going through something my person is going to reach out or like i'm going to have my union or somehow we are going to like meet when the timing is right when it's going to happen so some of you have that sense of reassurance some of you would know that it's okay you know so that's what i got from this card also the number 36 so 36 could be an important number like in terms of an age maybe like this person is 36 years old uh maybe 36 is like when you all get married or maybe like when you all have kids or something but it could be like an important age it could be an important number of any way like maybe you all live on like house number 36 or something um 3 is the number of expansion fertility so definitely this is somebody you're going to have children with and they definitely have kids on their mind because like this said i want to be a better parent so this is somebody you're going to have like children with 6 is the number of unconditional love reciprocas reciprocity reciprocity i'm sorry i don't know how to pronounce it so well um it's also the no the number of like good communication so you're going to have a very good way of communication and that just reiterates the fact that despite not knowing each other in flesh maybe you'll still have a very good bond of communicating in case you do happen to know this person which i feel like maybe some of you do then even if this person has like gone away or like this person is in like a foreign country maybe studying maybe working uh maybe like maybe in the army you'll do have a good communication like you'll skype often or like you know you'll facetime often or like you'll send each other letters if that's the only way to do it but like your communication would be good with them mm -hmm. so the next card we have is uh love is all around you there is love everywhere all the time simply acknowledge this as truth with the number 16 uh six has come twice so i just i don't want to reiterate and repeat what i said but basically unconditional love good communication reciprocity number one is like initiating something you know um from going from zero to something so starting like a new it also means like a new beginning so like your union with this person or like your marriage with this person is going to be of is going to be like a new beginning of sorts i'm leaning more towards like a new beginning for them because like they are doing everything in order to like make this new beginning happen but also it could very well be for you like a new start or a fresh start in life um with love is all around you there's love everywhere all the time simply acknowledge this as truth um this makes me think that when you're with them you're going to be like in a more optimistic receiving kind of energy or maybe they are but basically everything is going to feel peachy and rosy and happy you know it's like you're going to see like look at the flowers outside your window and be like oh my god i'm so in love with them like you know just but feel that love and feel that happiness around you and like i don't know but i'm feeling the word warmth warmth radiating making you feel loved making you feel mushy but like 
you know being in that state where like you know there's a lot of love around you also this could be like you know when this person is coming into your life or like when this person is approaching you you're going to feel very loved and happy like you know um you're going to be in a very good state of mind like you know all that negativity or all that pessimism or like cynical cynicism or whatever is you're not going to feel that when they are with you like sometimes you know you just wake up and you're in like a really good mood that's how it's going to feel when they are approaching you this is also how like you're going to feel in this relationship with them like you're going to feel love all the time they are going to feel it and i think that's what like they are preparing for like a rosy that rosy phase or that happiness or like being able to be like the good a good partner towards you so like how some people when like they meet somebody they have like a rosy phase but eventually it wears off yeah so with you i don't think that's going to happen because they want to keep things going and keep things happy and peachy for as long as they can so it's always going to be like lovey dovey and happy around them mhm mm but it could also be like before you meet them you are in that good state of mind so it's like you know maybe like the flowers you saw yesterday were like not so impressive but because today you woke up in that good mood and like you feel like there's love so there's so much love around you there's so much happiness around you suddenly those same flowers feel so much more prettier and better and you're like wow okay i'm so happy today i'm so i'm feeling so much love today so that's something you could be feeling with them okay so now we'll just look at this card from the botanical inspirational deck um each of these cards come with like a little code and a little back story and then their meaning so i'm going to just read it from the book but the flower is snapdragon and the code is great. the meaning of this card is um graciousness and benevolence no act of kindness no matter how small is ever wasted okay so i'm going to just read it from the book because it explains it better so we have um this is a little story about the origin of this flower so snapdragons were first discovered growing wild in italy and spain in victorian england the snapdragon communicated grace and benevolence if a gentleman gave a lady a bouquet containing snapdragons it was a compliment to her character and her kindness the dragon like blossoms were also believed to have mystical powers that warded off evil and misfortune Snapdragons were given as housewarming gifts as well as tokens of gratitude for gracious and kind hospitality. So, if I have to like extrapolate some meaning from this, Italy, Spain, and Victorian England could be important places. Perhaps where your spouse is from, perhaps where you are from, or even like your place of meeting, perhaps. Mm hmm. Um. also it makes me think of like the fact that somebody wants to give a bouquet of flowers it makes me think like your person is trying working hard to become like that proper gentleman you know um to have like that chivalry well mannered good person so coming back to like the great gatsby example like jay gatsby used to be a soldier right in an army before but then before he could meet daisy or like you know get her in get her into his life he like made that big house and like he learned all these good manners and he like figured like he started to act like rich and stuff right so like maybe this person is working hard to like become better than like where they came from or like you know work hard on themselves just to be better people not just externally for like money or showing off or anything but they genuinely want to be like not just look gentlemanly but actually be like that if this is a male but it could also apply for female but here it says that if a man gifted a lady a bouquet containing snapdragons it was a compliment to her character and her kindness so like this person i feel like is going to have a lot of empathy 
they're going to have a lot of kindness you know and kindness is is a virtue they like to see in other people as well so like you can't expect them to be kind and then you not be kind like they will see the way you treat people of like a low economic status or like how you talk to like servers or something how you talk to people from call centers that shit matters to them you know like if they are learning to be a better person they also want their person to be like good so that's just something i had to point out anyway the inspirational message is it is easy to be kind and gracious with the people we love and care most about but true grace and benevolence extends to those we do not know and sometimes even those we may not much like so like i said it's important to them the way you treat other people the way you see other people even if it's people you don't like and the same goes for them so like even if like they become like a rags to riches person they're still going to be very humble and kind towards people of like the low economic status they're going to be nice to people from the entire spectrum of the econo- socio economic status you know it doesn't matter to them where you come from um what your background is like how much money you have how well you're doing in your career if you're kind that's what matters to them if you're gracious that's what matters to them and that's how even they are going to be so yeah now this card is going to just give us a little bit of indication about your union so we just like get a better idea of like maybe when or like what the um emotions or energy would be while meeting i'm going to look at tarot cards as well in terms of like the energy but um take time to breathe out disseminating moon so um like i said before in the reading that although some of you may be like stress like oh my god when am i going to meet this person or like when is our union going to happen or like why this has not happened yet i think this is just saying that take a breather it's going to happen when it happens uh it is important to observe the moon cycles because this is disseminating moon so i think that means the moon shrinking if i'm not sure but basically like don't obsess over the idea of like when 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 be happy be optimistic go about your own life you know do well in your own way do things that make you happy and i think that's where like you know once you are in a happier space and you start attracting love and you see love around you this person will automatically come because obviously they are not just from your soul family but also like they are your future spouse and they love you so much so like when in your when you're in that state of like attracting love and seeing love and seeing a lot of love around you that's when like they'll show up anyway so like just chill take a deep breath just chill out they are coming don't obsess or like you know be paranoid about when this is going to happen like oh my god all my friends are getting married what is happening with me they are coming they are coming in good time don't worry um also like i said before some of you guys although if you have not like met this person yet or like you don't know who they are some of you because you guys are in communication with the higher selves you guys know that you know what it's taking time but they are coming a union is going to happen i am going to ultimately meet my future spouse in divine timing or whatever so some of you are anyway relaxed about it you know but basically um time to breathe out just chill um this could also mean like um time to breathe out this could also very well mean like you meet this person when you're like on a pause or when you're on a holiday you know um when you're taking time away from like your busy schedule or your work life or anything that is familiar or your familiar life that is when this person could like zoop come in so like i mentioned those places italy spain um uh, england uh victorian england um maybe like if you're going on vacation over there that's when you may meet them but like with the amount of like forest and trees i see here this could also be somebody you meet like you know when you're in a calmer state or like when you're in the midst of nature so like you know um 
it doesn't physically have to be in like the midst of nature but how when you're in nature you're breathing in good oxygen and your like your vitals are high and you're like automatically in a good state of mind you're calm you're feeling enriched looking at the amount of greenery and all of that so like that could be the state of mind when you meet them as well it could be their state of mind as well but anyway we are going to do an energy check for them so we'll know better but basically um you're not good this person is not going to hack come into your life or your union or your marriage is not going to happen if you're going to be like very hyper about it it's going to get more delayed so it's going to just take a deep breath just chill you know um breathe out you know don't hold so much in just let it out be calm be happy be in a good state of mind especially if you're like trying to manifest them then like in manifestation like they always say that you know you have to like do the manifestation say the meditation but then detach you know it's important but like not obsessively think about it all the time that's what this makes me think mhm mm so that's when you might meet them But now let's just look at your tarot cards in order to like get a better idea of like their energies. So um, the first one is going to tell us about the current energy, like where they are at this point in life. In case you know um, this resonates with you, this could very well mean like you know maybe if you know somebody who's going through something like this or like has a similar energy, then maybe like the other one, or maybe like you just knew it already. this is their energy when they meet you and this is their energy this is the energy of like your union what it is like being with them so nine of pentacles is like their current energy um queen of cups is like at the time of meeting you and two of cups is like your relationship and i love this because two of cups basically means like finding your one and it means like it means soulmate vibes but i want to point out first like with the amount of water energy this person could very well have lot of water placements in their birth chart like they could be a water sign sun moon or rising which is pisces cancer or scorpio this could also mean like they are pretty emotional or just like i said before they have lot of empathy lot of love to give lot of emotions to flow mm hmm But anyway, coming to their current energy, the nine of pentacles basically means like you know, um, luxurious solitude or like basically this card makes me think of like you know a lot of self growth in like a foreign place or like in a place you've not been before, like something that is not familiar, like taking a step back, ah, uh, and like learning the ways of that and like enriching yourself. this could also mean like taking a pause away from like civilization or like concrete jungle like retreating into like the forest or something because in the traditional tarot uh there's this lady and like she's in this field and like there are grapes and there are these things that are like planted so that makes me think of like nature and agriculture and it also goes with this but basically stepping away from like the chaos of like noise and pollution in the city and your regular familiar life or like everything that keeps you busy and moving into a place of quiet and that's when you know you kind of go inwards and learn and grow as a person mm -hmm. but this also makes me think of like going on a foreign land because like supposing for example um you apply for like this job somewhere like you're working in this company and you want to live in another country and they have offices all over the world and like you have family let's say in like san francisco and you're like i hope i get it there i hope i get it there but instead like they post you in some place like poland or something where you have like no family no support nothing you go there as the first person from your family and like you have to establish yourself there so like you go there you learn the language you figure out how it like the social security number works how transport works um basically learning their systems even learning their cultures then once you start office you make friends you go out for drinks learning about their lives in case you know their grandparents were in like the warsaw pact and like part of the war and stuff 
so learning their history and everything that you learn that is like new in a way enriches your soul and helps you grow as a person right so maybe like you were not interested in history in school but now that you're hearing, hearing stories firsthand about like the war in Krakow or like Warsaw or whatever you're suddenly very interested because you're hearing it from a first person voice and you're like finding the emotions so you're growing as a person so and this also definitely means like a lot of internal work growth which I think goes in tandem with the letter so basically um, at this point I can 100% say that they are retreating away from like uh, maybe like a um, lot of like you know like being very social or like having social media there's something they have to do there's something that requires their focus and they can't do with all these distractions like going out for drinks or like posting on social media or something there's something that requires their complete and utter focus and that's helping them grow as individuals that's actually teaching them also like i said you know the things i've seen the places i've been and use those experiences to enrich our life that becomes our forever they are using these things as a way of learning they are not just using it them for themselves but they are using it as a lesson for their future and although like they've they've been through shit or whatever or like they're going through it currently they are going to tell you about it so it's like even if they're ashamed of their childhood or their past or whatever it's not going to be some secret they don't want you to be involved in their life but they're going to be honest about it with you they're going to be sharers but in their own time and like the places i've been the things i've seen seen that makes me think of like you know even metaphorically like maybe i've been like in the worst of worst i've been down in the dumps or maybe I've even been to like one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Like maybe they're actually traveling. And the things I've seen. That makes me think of experiences. Maybe they've even seen certain things. So like for example if it's like a sad thing or a bad childhood. They've seen a lot of violence maybe in their house. Maybe they've seen a lot of financial struggle. Maybe they've seen a lot of sacrifice. You don't know but like. This is like something that is really enriching their soul. And like this is something they are like working really hard on. To like become better or like to level up or like let that be in the past. Whatever it is, they are not shrugging it away. They are working through it. You know, so they are not ashamed. But it's not something they want to carry forward. Or if it's like a call of duty, like I said, the war. That also explains the things I've seen, the places I've been. Like in war, you see a lot of stuff. That's why people can come back shell-shocked, right? Um, they are learning a lot. They're learning about unconditional love. They're learning about sacrifice. They're learning about bravery. And they're going to use that for like the future. Mm-hmm. Now coming to the Queen of Cups, the Queen of Cups is like a jackpot card when it comes to like relationships in a way because the Queen of Cups is like one of the most loving cards. Like there's something very maternal about the Queen of Cups. She's somebody who has a lot of empathy, a lot of love to give and she knows what people want instinctively without them having to tell her. So it's like when they meet you, like I said, they're going through this journey but you they said and once my journey is completed I promise your union will be beautiful and they intend to keep their word on it so at the time of meeting you they would have like completed this journey and would have become like this queen of cups kind of energy very happy to constantly love you love you unconditionally love you wholeheartedly Love you with everything they got. Love you so much that they would know what you're feeling, what you want without you having to even tell them. The Queen of Cups is somebody who loves to take care of others. So they'll always like want to take you to like nice restaurants or like make sure like everything is proper for you. So like supposing you know you guys want to talk about money post marriage. They will sit on a table. They'll want everything proper for you. Provide well for you. You know, having the Queen of Cups, having somebody like with the Queen of Cups in your life is like really having that feeling of being taken care of. Plus, to know things you want instinctively, 
means that you wouldn't even have to tell them what you need or like how you're feeling so on a snappy day they'll already know that you know you've been through something they'll try and cheer you up they'll sense that oh my god you know maybe she wants a favorite cake from the bakery and they'll pick it up for you on their way back home from work or something but basically the card that loves a lot and like i said they have a lot of empathy so they have a lot they have a very kind heart i can tell you that and the two of cups basically means your soulmate finding your reflection in one another finding your match finding your partner finding somebody who is your match in like love marriage work it means really good communication it means marriage very happy married life lot of reciprocity and it means like the meeting of your heart and your soul so like you all will be very connected and i think the word soul is repeated twice so like i said they are 100% from your soul family so maybe for some of you this is not even like a new thing it may feel like new for you in this life but 100% this connection is not not 100% but for some of you this could mean a reunion of sorts like this person has been with you for few lifetimes and they are just it's like reconnecting with them so for the last part of your reading um we're going to look at these two cards just to get an idea what your relationship is going to be like with them i know i already did a video on this actually i did two but i just felt really drawn to call pick up these cards plus they are like so cute and fun i just thought what's the harm so we have teamwork as your first card and how these aunts are playing jenga uh, i'm determined to be a good teammate in all of my relationships if we disagree i'll resist the urge to place blame and look for a way to solve the problem together when we are a team everything's a game and when we are on the same side nobody can lose not even the cubs finally so this definitely gives me like very family vibes like you know maybe you'll spend sundays lazing in the morning playing jenga together but like i said you know with the two of cups the soul family you're definitely are like from the same team and you're all always on the same team always on like the same page when it comes to like raising kids or like making decisions and stuff even if like you all have different points of view because of your good communication and your ability to reciprocate even things you all disagree on that stuff can be resolved very easily by like just talking it through like sitting on a table making pros and cons putting your idea forward and them respecting it and you doing the same for their ideas so it will be a very like you all will be a team together I have to say that and the next one is open heartedness i know that life and the people living it can be absolute an absolute bummer sometimes but i promise not to let unhappy chapters make me jaded if i let negative experiences turn me sour then the jokes win so i'll move on with an open and hopeful heart if only because i hate losing to jokes but basically like i said you know even if they are ashamed of like their past or whatever they are not going to keep it a secret they are going to not let it have a negative influence on like their future they are going to be very honest about their life about what they've been through what they've experienced and they're going to tell you that with a very open heart like you know like like it shows like this open book they're going to be very honest with you and you can have that same feeling with them you can 100% be completely honest with them as well you know talk about your life what you've been through so it will be a very open relationship and i think that again goes with like the good communication with the two of cups soul family so i definitely see you guys like talking a lot like sitting on a couch and just talking and talking for hours and like in a in the least judgmental way like no judgment is going to be passed you will just be a good listener to them they will be a good listener to you um you will have a good shoulder for them to cry on and then they'll have a shoulder for you to cry on but basically they'll be there for you in the capacity and way you want them to be there for you and that's how your relationship is going to be that's the person they're working to be you know 
so that's what i see for you guys um so yeah that is everything i have for you pile two pile one sorry i don't know why i said pile two but pile one i hope it resonated with you i hope it gave you some kind of reassurance i hope it gave you clarity about your future life and especially i hope it made you feel okay about things because like this is the letter they wrote for you and i really wanted you to know that they love you very much and if they are not in your life yet it's because they are going through something or they have to complete something so have patience also cut them some slack but yeah they are doing this in order to turn into a better person a better version of themselves for you and your family moving forward especially so yes um that is everything i have for you i hope you enjoyed it i hope it resonated with you i hope it gave you some sense of clarity but mostly i hope it made you feel better if it did do any of the above then please do consider liking this video sharing it with those who you think it may help uh commenting with what resonated what didn't and finally subscribing to my channel because that would really help me and i'll see you in my next video bye bye I pile too. If you guys chose this envelope or like this letter, it's not an envelope with this this flower on it. Then this is gonna be your reading. So let me just give you a little breakdown on how this reading is gonna work. You're first gonna open up this letter and read it and channel the message from your future spouse. Then we're gonna try and take away whatever we can extrapolate or extract from this letter about them or about your union. Then we are going to look at some oracle cards to get better insight on your person, um, the state of mind, your union, your impending union, and then we are going to look at some tarot cards to get an idea of like their current energy, like where they are currently in their life, their energy at the time of meeting you, and the energy of your union or your relationship. And then we'll conclude the reading with two cards from the Affirmators Love and Relationship deck. Just to get an idea of what your relationship is going to be like with them, so let's just begin. So um, I'm going to just read this letter and tell you what they feel or what they want to tell you. So, my dear, your name. Shakespeare once said, "Love is like a child that longs for everything it can come by." Ever since I've known about you, I can't stop thinking about you. The more I think about your love. and our life together the more end up falling in love with you when it comes to you i literally feel like the child mentioned in shakespeare's quote as i long for every bit of you i can come across because no amount of loving you is ever actually enough you know the first thing i think about when i wake up in the morning you are what keeps my mind alive throughout the day and then i fall asleep thinking about you again hoping soon we'll fall asleep together I long for that time. I really do. Suffice to say, you want just the best part of my mind, but even the best part of my existence. Love you so very much. Your name. <laughs> no, their name. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. So, um, yeah. So, if we have to dive deep into this letter, when I was writing it, um, the feeling I got is that this person is. Hundred percent, um, a romantic, but not in like the most conventional self. Like they'll not like sing songs to you and stuff, but like their gestures will show it, and they definitely let on much less than what they think. So like you know, even if they're thinking about you twenty four seven, they may like be like I'm busy, I have to finish this work or whatever, but they are actually secretly thinking about you a lot. You know, so. they don't let on as much as they are feeling at the start but in their mind they're always like i want to be romantic they love you very much they could have like maybe water placements also in their zodiac but even maybe a little bit of fire but the the thing is i get the feeling that you know they are very calm in a sense like even if like you know they are romantic they're not overly overdoing it in any way you know also the fact that you know they mentioned shakespeare although like he's the most common love writer for quotes and stuff um i get the feeling that they're very well read 
or maybe like they've had a good education or maybe they like medieval literature or something in order to quote Shakespeare but also I get the feeling like you know they're full of fun facts or whatever so like for example supposing um they're talking about dahlias for example they'll be like oh did you know that dahlias were significant for this or that in the 18th century so it's like you know they like they they are like this um they're like this pocket of knowledge and like they have so much of it but like not in like the show off way but like you discover it in the most random and quiet ways so like supposing like they went to Harvard or they went to Oxford or something they're not like you know I went to Oxford I went to Oxford it's not like something they mention in every second sentence it may like supposing you go on a date with them you may not even know it in your first date or second date it'll just come up at random and you'll be like oh my god you went to Oxford you studied literature or like whatever you know that's how it'll come up like they'll downplay their achievements in a certain way so although they're thinking about you a lot they have this groundedness in the way like they think about you like waking up with you going to bed with you like I feel like Although they love you very much and they are romantics, they are like simpletons, you know, they have a very simple soul. They don't like to complicate things like, you know, if like they are going to the park to like read a book, they are literally going to the park to read a book. They are not going to the park to read a book to make it show like, you know, they are these cool people who read books or whatever in parks or like to quietly look at girls or boys or whatever, impress somebody. They are actually doing it because they want to. You know, there's very like face value stuff about them. That's the feeling I got. Mm -hmm. Also, it's like, you know, they have this yearning for more and more. So whether it is like in this case, definitely it's for you. But I feel like it could be for everything. So like they're always looking to learn, grow and be like evolve as people as individuals but like grow their knowledge you know just not because like they can apply it for something better but because they like to be like that and they do it in a very understated way you know they, they downplay they are not like overly show off you or anything in the way they do things and they are very honest like I long for that time I really do so it's like supposing they say something they actually mean it they are not saying something and expecting you to unearth some other meaning from it or something. They're like how sometimes when we were in school, we'd be like, no, I'm not that pretty. No, because you wanted your friends to say that. No, come on, don't be silly. You are so pretty or whatever. You know, if they're saying I'm not pretty, it's because they actually feel like that. They are not looking for like external validation or external compliments or something. You know, they actually are feeling like that. So... There's something very real about them, very genuine about them. Mm -hmm. And how they say, suffice to say, you are the best part of my mind, but even the best part of my existence. So it's like, you know, their mind lights up when they think about you. Their mind lights up when they're like fantasizing about you or when they're thinking about life. But like the, the way they think... It's not like they're thinking of like going on a trip to Africa with you or doing something completely crazy. They actually just imagine you integrated in like a regular life thing. So they actually just dream about like doing everyday life stuff with you. Like going grocery shopping or like going to sleep with you or waking up with you. You know, reading books with you, watching TV together. So it's like there's something very grounded and real like they have a very realistic view about life and stuff but like it makes me think of like they want a good foundation with you that's why right now they just want to think about like the regular life with you just living that life with you and for them it's like that's a big deal maybe like in the past they've like tried to like think about life with another partner or something and like gone off the edge and thought about like going on these fabulous adventures and that didn't work out so well with them but it's like with you they feel like even their everyday is so much more better I don't feel very strongly about the fact that you know they are discouraged because of a past relationship and it's like brought their standard down or anything 
I just feel like that's how they are. Just to like think about regular life with you and feel like that's the most beautiful thing that's happening with them. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, they're actually pretty simple people in that sense. Like no fuss, but also, yeah, very knowledgeable. Like they'll be full of facts and stuff that you didn't even know. But like it just comes out out of the blue and you're like, whoa. I didn't know you knew that, but they did. And at the most random of times, so like, you know, downplaying them or something. But they have this very chill calmness about them, you know. The way they say things, the way they do things. You know, so yeah. But like, it says, yeah, I can't get enough of you. I can't stop thinking about you. So it's like, once they're committed, they're really committed. And this is like, in a way, a stubborn kind of energy. They ain't budging. Once they love you, they love you all in. Mm -hmm. And that, like, that stubbornness, that gives me a very earthly kind of feeling. I know I mentioned all the zodiac signs, but basically, yeah. So let's just put this here. And now we look at your oracle cards in order to get some more messages about this connection or your impending union. So the first card we have is um, Insight with number 13. So um, one is the number of like <coughs> initiating something, like taking the first step, so like going from zero to something. So it could also mean like a fresh start, a new beginning of sorts. So maybe for some of you, like this could be like a new person. Or like marriage to them could be like a new beginning for you. Or it could be for them as well. And uh, number three is like the number of expansion, fertility, um, travel, looking at the future. So this is somebody you definitely are going to go the distance with. It's like a proper long-term, solid, happy marriage. It's also somebody you may have kids with. You will have kids with because of number three to like go from two to three, which is like expanding and growing. This is also somebody you could be like doing business with or something. So this could also be somebody you met through work. Just wanted to say. Insight. That's the feeling that's telling me that um, when it comes to this connection or when it comes to this person, um, it would be like very easy to like get to like know their true selves, to get an insight into who they are. And same applies to you. So like I said, you know, they are pretty face value people. They say what they mean. And even though like they downplay it and stuff and like, you know, they're not overly, they don't have like these grand gestures and stuff. Deep down, you know, they love you so much. And that's because of like this insight you have about them. Also, I feel like, you know, when this, when, when your union is like coming close in case you don't already know this person, for some of you, though, I feel like you might know this person instinctively or like through insight. But like in case you don't know this person, at the time of your meeting, your insight or like your instinct will be heightened. Mm -hmm. This is somebody you're going to know very easily. And this is somebody you can look through you as well. So like supposing you're feeling sad, but you're trying to put on a cheery face, they're going to catch on like this. They're going to be like, what's bothering you? Mm -hmm. but yeah basically they're gonna they're gonna know you head to toe very well very easily but basically you're gonna definitely know about them Know how they feel by gaining this insight about them, you know. So, there's actually not much to say. This card is, I think, pretty self-explanatory. But, like, basically know each other very well, see through each other. 
get a very good idea of like who this person is what your relationship is going to be like and if you look at this picture like this person looks so evolved you know like there's so much light passing through them and like it's like going through all their chakras so i definitely feel like this person could be a very evolved being in a way you know like they are very mature or they are just very smart but they are very evolved like as a person so um this could also be like somebody who is a little older or like of an older age mm -hmm. so yeah also i forgot to mention um 1 plus 3 adds up to 4 and 4 is the number of stability a solid foundation creating roots so this is somebody you're going to have a very very solid foundation with and that once again reminds me of like earth energy because like you're having this very groundedness and like building roots into the earth so there's something very realistic very strong and very stable about your relationship mm -hmm. also four could be like four people in a family so it's like you them and like two kids you them maybe one kid a pet dog or something but like it reminds me of that as well uh the next card is have patience love is patient and kind always so in case you don't know this person and you're wondering where they are i think this card is pretty straightforward in saying have patience also if they are of an earth sign earth sign people move very slowly uh huh that's because they like to take their time they like to like i said you know they have this stubbornness once they are in they are all in and there's no budging but before they go in especially i think capricorns they really like to scout out their person they like to know that person for who they really are so it's like cut the bullshit you can't put up a show and appear in a way that is impressive to them because they are going to see right through you and i think that gets iterated even with like the insight so they're going to know you as the person you are so for example if supposing they love the marvel universe and they love marvel movies or something but you don't like that kind of stuff don't pretend to like it because they do they're going to see through you so be your authentic self with them you know that's that's what i'm getting through this and have patience because like they take their time in like getting to know you to understand who you are to study your patterns to study your tastes your likes your dislikes to study your personality and for them that's like learning and research and that research is helping them understand and like love you for who you are despite the fact that you may not like all the spider-man movies or like you may not like the marvel universe something they still love you because you're honest with them about it so yeah don't don't like pretend to be something you're not around them because they're going to see through you and also this is pretty straightforward have patience love is patient and kind as always and also we have like this little girl in a lotus um the lotus i think is the national flower of india so maybe some of you guys are from india um but like the lot lotus also is associated with lord krishna and he's like one of the most gentle souls somebody who doesn't lose his temper yes soft feet soft hands so there's a very gentleness to them also the fact that they quoted shakespeare says a lot because not everybody does that so it's like they have this romantic side to them also but like in a very gentle like i said nothing is overdone with them mm -hmm. even their gestures is full of love the intention is good but don't expect them to like you know um book a whole restaurant for you on your first date and stuff even on your 10th date because that's like overly doing it and just that's just not their style they're very gentle they don't like to downplay it they never like to take credit for like things that they've not done so yeah there's something very soft and gentle and like loving about them also we have the number 17 so we have 13 and 17 <laughs> i don't want to say like you're going to be 13 or something but like maybe this is somebody you've known since you were 13 maybe like 
your 13, their 17, or like your 17 and their 13, it could be. Also, again, number one has come, so like new beginning. And seven, I think, is the number of manifestation. So this could, this person could very well be a result of like your manifestations. Also, seven is like a sacred number. So like seven days of the week, the seven chakras. So there's something very sacred and spiritual about that number. Just wanted to mention that. And now the last card for now is like from the botanical inspirations. So we have sacred lotus and the message is enlightenment. No mud, no lotus. So again, I think lotus has come. So we have like lotus twice. So lotus could be a very significant flower. You know, maybe you, you meet them while looking at lotuses or something, but like the lotus is a very important flower when it comes to your relationship. Maybe like you have lotuses in your house moving forward, but there is something very gentle and loving about the lotus. Also, the lotus opens and closes with light. So, this is like reminding me of like moving towards the light. This is somebody I feel like you will meet in the daytime, not at night. Also, um, being with them is like following the light. Being with them is like moving towards light and that also goes with like the word enlightenment. And I think it goes hand in hand with like insight. Because unless you get insight, you can't be enlightened and like all your chakras aligning basically means enlightening, enlightenment, you know. But each of these cards come with like a little history and its own message. So I'm going to just read that from the book to get a better idea of like what this card means. Mm -hmm. Also, we can try and get like some details on like who this person is, where they are from. So, where's my book? There it is. So, Sacred Lotus, Enlightenment, No Mud, No Lotus. The lotus flower grows up out of the mud yet each day as the petals unfurl and shed the droplets of water the flower emerges perfectly pristine for this reason the lotus symbolizes purity and spiritual transformation with its flower so distant from its roots below the water the lotus also represents detachment a necessary step for spiritual enlightenment the golden scent of the lotus is rarely shown in zen artwork since it represents the elusive perfection of wisdom. The Egyptian sun god Ra is often depicted with a blue lotus because of this association with the sun. The lotus, the lotus signifies rebirth. So like I said, number one, rebirth, fresh start. Also, Egypt could be an important place. Maybe you meet this person in Egypt on a holiday or something. Maybe they are from Egypt. Maybe you are from Egypt. I don't know. But like I said, detachment. So I think earth signs are both very all in but also very detached. Also the word detachment makes me think that maybe, you know, like supposing like they come from money or like I said, you know, they are very well educated or like, you know, um, maybe they're doing very well. They don't let that stuff go to their head, you know. Um, they're very detached from like the idea of like what success is and like associating it with themselves so i feel in that way they have like transcended that and like like i said they're very evolved being they don't associate their success as like themselves so like even if they come from a well-to-do family or like they went to a really good college or like they are very well accomplished themselves it still comes down to the root level of it like how they are as people and like how devoted they are to their family or like you know just how they are as human beings and that is of importance to them so like I feel like they've transcended like a lot of materialistic shit and like moved on to become like better people in that sense but yeah moving on to the message actually of this card we have honor all the experiences that have brought you to this place on your path of spiritual growth but let go of the things that no longer serve you. So like I said, um, shit that doesn't serve them, they let it go. So like they don't burden themselves with nonsense and negativity. They are very selective of what they like to keep and what they like to let out. 
and like when things don't work out for them they're very easy to cut loose you know um they're good at detaching it also this makes me think that you know when they have to work they're studious they're working they're not thinking about you but when they think about you they're constantly thinking about you and then that's when it comes that i can't stop thinking about you but like they have that passionate sense to them when they're working they're working when they're thinking they're thinking so that's what i'm getting from like this card mm -hmm. but like i said this person comes across as a very evolved person so maybe like they are just very mature for their age or maybe like they are of the older age group like they've like transcended a lot of materialistic stuff they've experienced a lot in life and stuff and now they've learned from it and like they moved on from like earthly materialistic things also 13 and 17 could be important dates of like a month or something is like when you'll meet or when you're born or like maybe when you'll get married and stuff but yeah this card is now going to tell us a little give us a little insight about your union so we have a personal issue reaches resolution full moon in cancer so um i don't know when the full moon in cancer is i'll look it up i'll maybe add it as a note but um a personal issue reach, reaches resolution so that makes me think that maybe one or both of you have some personal shit you need to let go of or solve and once that is done this union would happen mm -hmm. maybe like you know they're going like maybe um like how in pile one they needed to like go through this journey to become and come out as a better person so maybe like they need to like go through their own thing or maybe like you have to go through this um I feel like this card more speaks about you than it does about them because like I said they come across as very evolved beings. So I feel like if you're dealing with some shit or something maybe like in your family maybe your perception on relationships or marriage or something it's something very personal something that affects your emotions especially because cancer is a very emotional zodiac sign. Once that is resolved this person will come zoop into your life. Mm -hmm. that's what I feel now let's look at your tarot cards so um, this one is going to tell us about um, their current energy their energy at the time of meeting you and the energy or the feeling about your relationship or like basically what your relationship is going to be like so we have 10 of pentacles as their current energy we have page of pentacles as the energy at the time of meeting you which makes sense but i'll elaborate later and then we have the hermit when it comes to your relationship okay so um all of these i have to point out are all earth signs hermit is virgo if that is of any significance to you so like 13th of September or like 17th of September could be important dates uh, maybe it could be when you'll get married since this is like talks about your union uh, the remaining two are like um, Capricorn, Virgo and Taurus if those are important months but like I said it's a very grounded energy. Sorry I yawned. But it's kind of late now. But I want to continue. So. Grounded. So when it comes to 10 of pentacles. Speaking of their current energy. um, Like I mentioned before. Either they come from money. Or they are very accomplished. But they are doing very well in their career. I have to say that. Because like this little raccoon. He's like dancing with like these coins in the air and he's like in a good position. But like I said before, uh, the Ten of Pentacles or like this card mentioned, it's having this very high spiritual feeling or like having the spiritual enlightenment. So like although they're doing very well in their career or like they've accumulated a lot of wealth, um, they don't let that go to their head. 
they are still very spiritually accomplished so it's like transcending all the materialistic success and now moving towards like a better world view so like okay um i'm a successful at my job or whatever but that doesn't define who i am as a person you know i still have to be a better person i still want to be a good father or something you know or a good mother so that's the feeling i'm getting also the 10 of pentacles talks about like family having a good family having a good family life having everything perfect like a nice house good education for your children good standard of living nice holidays in the traditional tarot we also have like these dogs so maybe like having the pets and like you know having everything proper so family is definitely on their mind i have to say that like they are very geared up to have a family with you and have children with you that's like their priority you know um maybe they work so hard in order to like be able to like give time to family or like give time to like your children or give time to the spouse so like for example jennifer lopez after she had her twins she took two years off right from work to just like raise her kids maybe it's something like that for them like maybe after accumulating so much money getting so much success they just want to like sit back and spend time with their family enjoying the earthly things you know with kids and stuff but it's definitely on their mind and there's something very grounded and realistic about them is that an ant yeah you have a black ant ants are supposed to be very hard working creatures so these people are again very hard working and i think ant also signifies earth spirit so these people are definitely very strong earth placements in their birth chart very grounded very realistic Mhm. But yeah, like I said, successful but don't let that define who they are. Doesn't let it go to their head. They still feel like I've achieved success, but now I want to like be spiritually more advanced or more inclined and stuff. But like because of like the amount of like how evolved they are or how much success they've re- they've re- re- received I feel like these people could definitely be of like the older generation like maybe they are in like their late 30s or 40s or something of like maybe Mhm plus the fact that they want a family which means like maybe they are like like I have to do it now or never kind of a thing But like yeah maybe they are more of like an advanced age so like if i don't do it now then when or like people of my age have had families and they don't want it because other people have it but they want it because they want it like i said there's something very real about them coming to the page of pentacles this is the energy at the time of meeting you so this basically means a student life which i told you about before like they are going to take their time they are going to study you they are going to understand you they are going to study your patterns your rhythms your likes your dislikes your perception your personality at the end of it like they will know who your favorite spice girl is which your which is your favorite justin timberlake song i don't know why i said timberlake i was going to say bieber but then last minute i changed it to timberlake i don't even know why but like they'll know all the small intimate details about you because they love to study you and the page of pentacles basically means like a student body a student life learning with your heart and your soul and your whole body and enjoying the journey so like you know your courtship period like you know when you're like meet and then when you're date and stuff or like supposing you're getting engaged like this is a traditional thing you know that time they spend in like coaching you learning about you they're enjoying themselves they're learning with their whole mind and body and they're very receptive about like what you have to say so be very real with them you know don't pretend to like like something they like because they're going to see through it like i said before they're going to see through the crap and they're going to love you for who you are so they definitely they like when it comes to you they even however accomplished they are however much however much experience they've had with like love and ladies and life and stuff 
when it comes to you it's like i'm back to being a student i'm back to learning from like the start they don't have any qualms of like i know this so well i already know everything so much more better than everybody else like they don't let they don't want to do that they're like a sponge looking to absorb all that knowledge to like understand you study you you know so yeah also i love this imagery how they have this to do list so like when it comes to you when it comes to like being planned or being systematic they are very out there they are very systematic they are very earthly they do things in a very regular systematic planned way you know a uh, very organized these people could be with the amount of earth definitely feels like very organized strategic systematic person so like when you go to their house or something everything will be kept in like proper places in proper compartments and stuff you won't see things out of place or anything with them because they are very organized they like to do things very systematically they like to do things very step by step this also makes me think of like somebody who's quite traditional so like they're going to do things very traditionally like they'll first meet you go on a date with you then go on a second date with you go on a third date with you then properly ask you out then be exclusive with you then be more grand with you so they do things very systematically they build it up slowly and steadily so that's why i said like earth sign people are very slow in the way they move so it's very important for you to maintain patience with them if you're going to become all hyper and all it's like a straight no no from them mm -hmm. and now with hermit uh like i said you know they are not grand in the way they do things they are very down to earth in the way they express themselves in the way they have their gestures even though secretly they love you so much they're constantly thinking about you they're quoting shakespeare and stuff um the hermit is somebody who goes inwards and sheds light on darkness so you know um with the whole a personal issue reaches resolution so like i said before you have to be your real self with them so supposing you are going through some crap or whatever you know they are going to be the last people to judge you for your shit if you've had like a crappy past so supposing like i said maybe they came from money so they went to good schools good education maybe you didn't have the same kind of fancy upbringing as them but they are not going to judge you for your past or the way you grew up from or like where you grew up and stuff in fact they are going to take your traumas and shed light they are going to find your dark spots and put light onto it you know that's how it's going to feel like you know bring light into each other's lives and for them you are definitely bringing that light because they love you so much they are constantly thinking about you and you is what is keeping their mind alive and they feel like i want to do the same for you so it's like you know finding each other in the darkness and like lighting it up so this even goes with this like look at the amount of light that is passing through this person so getting this insight knowing one another being able to read each other like a magazine you know cutting the crap seeing through all the nonsense this is like your person they're going to really shed light so that is definitely something but having said that the hermit also means somebody who is very low key so like how you know there are some celebrity couples who are like not all out there and not constantly flaunting their pda and stuff for like the press and the papers and like the websites you guys may have like a little low key maybe even to a certain extent a boring kind of a life but it will be really wonderful with each other like i said the amount of light you all are shedding the way you all can communicate the way you all don't have to hide like the dark parts of each other it's going to feel wonderful but like i also said like this person thinks about you in their regular life like waking up they think about you while they wake up they think about you falling asleep together they think about like brushing teeth side by side maybe they think about like making breakfast together so it's ordinary life made extraordinary with them 
to take ordinary things and make it feel like enlightened and full of light and happiness and joy so even if like for other people spending an afternoon with family playing jenga or something may seem like the most boring thing on the planet with them even the ordinary things may seem exciting yeah so basically to summarize this card basically means everyday life ordinary life but made to feel extraordinary and made to feel exciting hmm to be able to enjoy and savor the regular things with so much joy and happiness like this person is really going to make you feel like your everyday life is so beautiful it's so wonderful mm -hmm. you don't need to crave excitement or like you know like go bungee jumping in the ocean or something to feel excited you can feel happiness even in doing the most ordinary things and that's how you're going to feel with them and that's how they want to make regular life feel for you mm -hmm. having said that i'm not saying that you guys won't have like fun adventures together but what i'm just trying to iterate and say is that despite all the traveling the vacations the abundance and all of that your everyday life is just going to be so wonderful it's going to be so happy so happening so full of love so grounded and at the same time you know this need to like constantly put up an act and be in a certain way around them is not required because they actually the the dark parts of each other you'll find a way to lighten those up you know and the parts of you that you feel like maybe you are ashamed of or like you want to hide they find those those very parts that you are ashamed of they find it what makes you beautiful what makes you you so low key but amazing that's the kind of vibe i get from this reading or that's the kind of feeling i get from like this card very down to earth very happy and enjoying your regular life like it is so extraordinary also like in the background we have like these mountains and mountains usually indicate obstacles or hurdles so it is like together you guys can overcome anything together you guys are so solid you guys can find the light even in the darkest of all situations so it's like together you all are so strong you all can overcome anything mm -hmm. just wanted to say that and like especially like with the personal issues there's nothing to be ashamed of you can be so honest with them and they'll actually sit and help you out you know they'll understand you they hear you out they'll hug you like oh my god you've been through so much and they'll try and make life better for you they'll try and ease things for you also they're going to be so generous with you so yes happy abundant ordinary life but still extremely extraordinary and now we are going to look at the final two cards in this reading which are your what your relationship is going to be like with them i know i have done not one but two readings on this topic but because these cards are so funny and playful i felt really got called to like draw them and use them in this so i'm just going to go ahead the first one is pleasure i give myself permission to feel pleasure and i let that pleasure rush into my life in a decadent display of over the top abundance then i realize that pleasure has been waiting at my door for a long time it's just that pleasure as a knock on doors because loud noises are super pleasant so basically it's going to be a very like i said before pleasurable relationship you guys are going to have a lot of fun together maybe this could even like mean like you know sexually pleasuring each other but like feeling that happiness feeling that abundance doing things that you enjoy and you even though it's said over the top abundance display ah <sighs> rush into my life in a decadent display of over the top abundance so like with the king of pentacles definitely not king 10 of pentacles definitely money won't be an issue it will be a very abundant married marriage in that way but um like for them it's just like soaking in a bath and drinking wine so <laughs> what they think is over the top may be extremely ordinary for other people but like i said they take even the most normal circumstances and make it into something fun 
that's how it's going to feel with them so like i'll give you an example so like this one time my brother called me to his house to do some arts and crafts like to cut up these things for like some um party he was throwing and he wanted to like just save on like the decor and stuff because just to like make like these displays of like words and stuff they were charging a lot so he was like you know what screw it i'm not paying for that i'll just call my sister who's little artistic and i'll have her do it and like i was doing it his pregnant wife was doing it my sister was doing it his his real sister my cousin sister and all of us were just sitting on the floor and like drawing alphabets and cutting it out and it could be a very boring exercise but he decided to make it fun so he decided to like play music he decided to order food from outside he decided to call for my favorite ice cream flavor and even though we were just sitting and like cutting up alphabets we made it into this little party and we enjoyed it just us the family so it's like that with you like you know you're just soaking in a bath drinking your wine listening to your music putting all your bath salts it may seem so ordinary like some people do this like every sunday but for you it's extraordinary and like with them even the most ordinary things may seem like decadent over the top but suffice to say like your everyday life the running of your house money needed for good food all that is going to be very well and easily stresslessly taken care of mhm mm the next card is compliments i know how it good how good it feels to get a compliment so i give that gift to others i'll find a nice compliment for everyone i interact with today even if i have to think really hard about it in which case i can follow up by complimenting myself for solving such a compliment puzzle wow i'm skilled <laughs> so like i said you know these people are very face value they don't say things they don't mean so if they compliment you it's because they really feel that about you so supposing like you know you're dressing up for some dinner party together and they say wow you look beautiful they're not saying it to like get you in a good mood so like you're nice to their guests or whatever they actually say it because you do look good mhm mm so suffice to say what they say they mean it but besides that because like i said they love you so much they actually think you're quite flawless because they're just thinking about you all the time for them giving you compliments is like secondary you're going to be in a relationship where they're constantly complimenting you like as far as they are concerned there's no better person than you to say you know so compliments is something that's going to be part of this relationship it's going to be something really nice because like growing up i didn't see my parents do that a lot to each other mm -hmm. mostly just when are you getting ready we are getting late for the dinner kind of a thing but here it's going to be a lot of exchange of compliments even if it's something as simple as thank you so much it made me so happy you got my favorite pastry or whatever but like the ability to like just make people feel happy you know it doesn't take a lot to do that and they understand it so they do it you know just the ability to like make people happy to make each other happy and like it says here it feels so good to receive compliments so like if they are complimenting you ultimately even you will like get into that process of constantly complimenting them and making them feel good so it will be a very good give and take kind of a thing and it will come very seamlessly very easily like you know um some people have these forced compliments but they don't have that it's going to come very easily to them like they are always saying like oh my god i'm so grateful to have you in my life oh my god you're so gorgeous oh my god you're so handsome oh my god you're so kind oh my god you're so loving oh my god i can only count on you you know like the truth but said in a very happy and meaningful way so yes that is everything i have for you pile 2 I hope it resonated with you. I hope it gave you some clarity about this union, about what your future spouse really wanted to tell you through their letter, their messages to you. I hope it made you feel happy. If it did indeed do any of the above, then please do consider liking this video, um, sharing it with those who you think it may help, or uh, commenting with what resonated, what didn't. 
and subscribing to my channel if you want to do that because that would really help me and i'll see you in my next video bye bye hi so if you guys chose the third letter or this one with these pink and yellow flowers then this is gonna be your reading um okay so um the way this reading is gonna go is that i'm gonna open up this letter channel to you by your future spouse uh we are going to read the letter we are going to try and gain as much insight as we can from this message or whatever your future spouse has to say to you what their current feelings are or like if there's anything about the future that's what we're going to decipher then um we're going to move on to a few oracle cards to get some more knowledge and insight about this connection perhaps even your union and then we're going to look at the tarot cards. So the tarot cards are going to tell us about their current energies, where they are currently in their life, their energy at the time of meeting you, and then the energy of your connection or your relationship. And then we're going to conclude the reading with just two cards from the Affirmator's Love and Relationship deck, just to get an idea of what your relationship is going to be like with them. So let's just begin. Okay, so this is the letter. I'm going to just read it. So it starts with, Hi you, I feel like it's been forever since we last communicated, even though I talk to you every day. Don't freak out, but sometimes when I'm alone, I pretend like you're right next to me. And that's when we have our longest and most deep conversations. I don't know about you, if you do the same, but if I'm being honest, those are the best parts of my day, secretly talking to you. I love the idea that I'm always with you and you're always with me, even if we aren't together in flesh yet. But still, it makes me feel wholesome. It also makes me look forward to being alone sometimes, even though we both know I hate being alone most other times. But that's enough of me blabbing on about myself. You know, I tend to do that. What I really just wanted to say, I love you. I love thinking about you. I love talking to you. And even when it doesn't seem like it, I'm always with you. Talk to you again tomorrow or maybe just in a couple of hours. Me. <laughs> um, I don't know, but um, while writing this letter, like while channeling this letter, I was in a really good mood. And from all the letters that I've channeled so far, this one came to me the most easiest. Like from the first sentence, it just like... I wrote this in like 15 minutes without pause or without hesitation or without any breaks, like trying to get any messages or any extra things that this person is trying to channel to me. It just came on like, zzz, you know, so it's like this person does have a tendency to like go on and on and on. Like maybe when they are writing, like actually they believe in like doing run and on sentences, like with a lot of commas, but not so many full stops. So it's like they like things to continue. They like things to go on and on. You know, um, this also gives me the feeling that they aren't the type of people to like, you know, hold grudges or like end relationships because like they don't have the, they don't like putting full stops when there can be commas. You know, um, that's what I got from them. And yeah, basically in a literal sense, they love talking, they love expressing, and they love going on and on. Like they just filled a whole letter just talking about how they communicate with you. And coming back to the communicating part, I feel like their higher self is in constant communication with you. So supposing for by chance, you know, you're working on like an important presentation or something and you're like, okay, so now um, this is what happened in... Warsaw, Poland and you know you're thinking about all that research and the war and the effects of the war the genocide and suddenly some random thought comes into your head like oh hey let's go grab a milkshake that's probably their higher self talking to you because like they say like you know they're constantly thinking about you and in a way they're constantly talking to you they're constantly reaching out so even if you don't know this person yet, as they have mentioned, even if we aren't together in flesh yet, I'm always with you. So like, they're always by your side. They're always listening in. They're always understanding where you are. 
for some of you this could literally mean somebody you already know because like they just started with hi you and me <laughs> um this also makes me think that this person has a lot of confidence you know um because they just went hi you and hi me and um it also makes me think like you know they have a good sense of humor or they're just like really um they that their hair loose they don't give a damn like there are some people who are just so candid and they're just so casual and like they don't have so many inhibitions or anything so this is like what they make me think of themselves um what else i had two three thoughts but now it's so jumbled up in my head i feel like i have to unravel that just to get all the key points out so don't freak out but sometimes when i'm alone i pretend like you're right next to me and that's when we have our longest and most deep conversations so you know all the sense of humor the laid backness aside you know their chattiness aside they also like to get down and get real you know they are i think one of the most genuine people like they may have a really good sense of humor or they may not like you know take things so seriously but there is still a lot of depth to them that probably gets unraveled over a period of time but once they get comfortable with somebody like you they can just like go on and on and on so despite like having this facade on the surface they actually are very mushy and they have a lot of feeling and emotion deep down that's what i got from this paragraph and i don't know about you if you do the same but if i'm being honest those are the best parts of my day so this makes me think that maybe sometimes even you like pretend like you're talking to your future spouse or like you know you imagine scenarios where you are like supposing for example you wake up early and you like to go jogging in the park down the street and sometimes like you imagine what it would be like to go jogging with my future spouse both of us would probably listen to the same song maybe you know we'll actually race on who makes it to the to the churro stand first and sometimes that imagining is what they do so in some ways maybe even you guys do the same like you know pretend like they are with you and in actually pretending i feel like they are with you at that point that is actually you accepting their communication and acknowledging their presence even if they are not like in flesh so the next time supposing you're pretending it actually could mean like they are actually there they are higher selves are actually there talking to you or wanting to be there or wanting to be included in that in that moment in your life so yeah but yeah they definitely feel like they have this sense of incompleteness without you and the fact that they say that just thinking about you thinking about a future together that's what makes me feel wholesome so there is like like i said you know they believe in putting commas not full stops but in your case i feel like once they have you their search or their need to like const- constantly go on would like have some kind of closure so like this is giving me a sense of like completeness mhm and also the fact that they don't like being alone which makes me think like this is somebody who's kind of like a gregarious social animal like they are probably like constantly surrounded by friends or like they have a job that involves dealing with people or something but they have like they have a very friendliness to them you know i feel like maybe they are an earth sign they are an air sign because i think air signs are very friendly like my mom is a gemini and she's like a very people's person more than me or my dad like she can make friends like this and she's like very likable and she just talks and talks and talks but people don't get bored of her they don't get tired of her they don't mind listening so like this person has that quality to them like maybe they have like the gift of the gab or like they just like being surrounded by people and like in many ways i feel like maybe like they are like in a way the life of the party so like they enliven wherever they go in by like bringing this easy goingness to them or to like the atmosphere and being all funny and haha and and like laid back so this is like although they don't have a seriousness to them 
they do have a lot of depth i know i'm saying it again and again but i'm just trying to take out extract or understand as much meaning or as much information i can get about this person while i can mm -hmm. but yeah despite like going on and on about how they talk to you how they hate being alone they just wanted to say that they are always with you even if you don't feel like it so like next time you're imagining them with you it's actually them with you the next time you try and secretly have a conversation with them or like supposing you're in a mix or something and you're like what should i do what should i do if i had my future spouse with that with me i would like actually ask them or something and then sometimes in your mind you imagine like what your husband would say what they would feel like i've not done it often but sometimes i wonder that you know in a certain scenario how i would want or like how i would imagine my spouse to like react or like act you know or like how they would like manage things so maybe like you don't do it as much as they do but if you do that's actually you communicating with their higher selves your higher selves communicating with their higher selves and i love how they end they ended this letter talk to you again tomorrow or maybe just in a couple of hours which means you're constantly in their mind and they're in constant communication with you because like i said they don't believe in ending things like they are constantly wanting to talk to you so this is somebody who you know you can get on to a phone and like you start like at 7 in the afternoon 7 in the evening and talk to like to win the morning kind of a thing and not be tired not be bored or like sometimes like in college i used to have this friend we would start texting on like a saturday evening and a chain of texts would end like the next weekend sunday afternoon or something that's how long it would go like it would just not stop and we could talk about anything under the sun what we ate for dinner uh when we peed <laughs> if we are going to any restaurant what we are doing obviously we grew up that person moved to another place so we don't do that anymore plus like time is like money now so you can't really sit and text so much but maybe like this is somebody you have texted in that way or like talked to or maybe it is somebody you are currently texting or talking to and the fact that they are so easy going they love chatting it could be an indication that maybe they are the ones for you and if not then this person in the future could be somebody you can just chat about anything and everything under the sun and like not you know have to put up a show or act or something you can be like very yourself with them you can leave your let your head out and just talk about anything under the sun with them and they don't mind they just love talking to you and yeah they have a very friendly outgoing gregarious personality they're easy going they have a good sense of humor they always laughing they don't hold grudges and despite all the stuff on the external deep down they're mushy they like having deep real honest conversations and they like they are very authentic in the kind of person they are so yes that is everything i have from this letter and yeah while writing it somehow while writing it i got into a really good mood so like when you are with them you are going to be in a very good mood like they are the type of people who like just put people in good moods you know so yeah let's just keep the letter here now we look at your oracle cards to just get some idea of this connection or like this person whatever meaning we can extract so the first card is sticking together so the first card is this one soul tree with the number 21 so 21 could be an important date it could be an age like maybe your 21 or maybe they are 21 or maybe you meet when you are 21 or you could meet on the 21st of a certain month or maybe you even met in 2021 in case you know you have an inkling who this person is in case you already know them because like with the whole hi you and me the fact is they don't have to like tell you who they are you already know and they already know you know 
you know so they have like this sense of confidence also about them like i don't have to pretend or i don't have to you know justify who i am i don't have to specify who i am they know who i am so it's like you know they have this casual confidence about them which i think in a way is very sexy but you know it's your call anyway coming to the meaning of this card soul tree it obviously makes me think of the fact that they are from your soul family and it's like you all are branched together you know um you are like sheltered under the same tree so it's like maybe also like the fact that like from the same tree this makes me think like this is somebody who's probably lived close by to you like maybe in your neighborhood maybe in the same country maybe you all went to the same college or the same school or the same colony or like the same building or the same neighborhood i don't know but it's like it makes me think like maybe they are part of like your community or something of sorts like maybe this is somebody you met through friends or something but like some kind of connection because like there is the tree and the tree grows and there is like a lot of branches involved maybe they are also from like your family or something uh but also under the tree there's like this network of roots and that makes me think that like somewhere you all are already linked somewhere like you know through this network you all met so that makes me think that maybe this is somebody you know like from your community or something like how in pile 2 or pile 1 i'm not sure but like long distance was a thing like maybe they are from a different country or something or maybe they moved away really far or something but here i feel like this is somebody from like within your community but also from like your soul family and your soul tree mm -hmm. so for many of you guys this is like this could also mean like a reconnection with your like somebody from your soul family uh also yeah with the network of roots like how things are com uh, like you know um connected that makes me that reiterates the fact that you guys are connected whether you all know it or not and that's why like your communication is so seamless that's how they say with so much confidence that i speak to you every day we communicate so often because you all are constantly talking mm -hmm. at least even if you it's not known to you those random thoughts that come to your head that you are like oh god where did that come from i didn't even think of that that is probably them speaking to you and those would be like the funny goofy thoughts that probably you don't think of yourself but that's their way of like coming through to you so yes also um trees could be an important like it could be an important symbol like maybe you know you all would like meet under the tree maybe like how some people have their names carved on a tree like any loves or any and john forever or like you know whatever like in movies they do it so i just thought i should mention it so maybe like there is a particular tree or something where you know you probably met them or saw them or that's where you would meet if you already know this person or it could be a tree in the future mhm mm the tree also makes me think of family tree so um i definitely feel like maybe your family is in somewhere involved or maybe your families will get along really well Mhm mm but also it makes me think of growing so together you guys will grow and expand into a really big family like maybe you all will have like three kids then each of your three kids will have like three grand kids three kids each and then you all will have like three kids and then nine grand kids and like expanding and expanding and with the amount of light it's like that much warmth and love is like growing so i see a lot of growth and a tree is something that takes years to like become big and solidify and like become this huge huge tree like i have trees on my farm that were planted before i was born and now they have grown so big so like this is something that happens over time you know but it has a very solid foundation and the roots of the tree they go so deep into the soil they go so deep into the soil that it's very difficult to uproot a tree you know the way they say that if you chop a tree midway it just grows back if you really want to kill a tree you have to like pull it out from the roots 
so this is something that's going to have a very solid strong base and also the fact that the roots are so deep rooted makes me think like maybe you guys have been together for like more than one generation you know like maybe this tree has been growing for like many many generations and this could be somebody you've been with for like many many lives or something yeah okay so now we look at the second card um this one is spend quality time together listen and talk to each other oh my god this just reiterates what this person was saying all this time like you know um they are constantly in communication with you so when they are talking you're listening and when you're talking they are listening and with the idea of spend quality time together um i can see this in two ways so the first one is that when you guys do meet and have your union you all will enjoy each other's company so much that inevitably you guys would be spending so much of quality time together like how some couples like um husband and wife like they crave for like alone time like especially like the new age husband and wife like space is really a big thing but with you guys each other's company will not feel annoying or irritated or even like too much you all will enjoy and blend in and enjoy quality time so much together like this one time um this one time i was walking on a street near my home and um in the city and one of my school friend lives on that street so naturally i bumped into her parents not her and they were just taking a walk together you know and the thing about her parents is that her her dad he he works from home he works from home and so does her mom so like they're constantly like together anyway and yet somehow that was still not enough time for them they still enjoyed going out enjoying each other's company going on these long and beautiful walks together so it's like it it's like that with you guys you all will really enjoy and cherish each other's company and in case and the second interpretation i have for this the second interpretation i have for this is that like they say you know um what is this sentence that they mentioned here uh but sometimes when i'm alone i pretend like you're right next to me and that's when we have the longest and most deep conversations so even if you guys are not together in flesh just yet they are just trying to say that even without having to like physically be with each other you'll do end up spending so much of quality time together mhm mm but yeah basically i think what this card basically means to say is that for you spending time with each other is not going to be something that gets on to your nerves or is an irritant or like you know space is i need my own space kind of a thing it's going to come very naturally it's going to come very organically and you're going to enjoy each other's company thoroughly mhm mm and especially with their laid back easy going nature i also feel like this is somebody who enjoys doing fun things together so it's like maybe they love going to the movies love maybe they love driving out to the mountains doing a picnic um maybe they love going bowling so in a way i feel like you won't even bo get bored with them that easily or like that quickly because they are so up on their toes and out and about so much themselves that spending time will, with them will be something completely fun you know like how some couples are just always having fun together like there's never a dull moment i feel like that's how it's going to happen but all the fun and laughter aside there will be moments in this time you'll spend together where you will really get down and get deep with each other that is also something that is very important to them mm -hmm. while like maybe for instagram or for the not even for instagram as such but um maybe on the surface of it like you all do have a lot of fun together and do fun things 
but there will be a connection that is much more deep rooted and deep seated like you know the roots of this tree there's something very deep something very solid about this relationship even though it may seem easy and fun and like you're like constantly on holiday or constantly like shopping or constantly going out and sightseeing or like constantly going out to dinners and stuff maybe for the outside world it will appear like you know that you all are constantly doing fun things together whatever but what they don't see is that that is just on the surface deep inside your connection is so much more mhm mm and that is like what is not seen so like you know how the roots of the tree go so much more down we don't even know how deep they go into the soil maybe they go deeper than the length and height of the tree itself that's how it is with you guys there's so much all don't show but still you'll have in that connection and even here like if you see these these two fairies or nymphs or whatever they are they are like making out under a tree so this tree thing is going to be a very important concept like maybe you guys are going to meet under a tree maybe a tree is going to be a particular place or a hiding place for you mm -hmm. and i see a lot of grapes are these grapes yes they are so i think you all will enjoy a lot of wine nights or maybe like one have one of you guys have something to do with wine but how they are like making out on like a moonlit sky you know at night so maybe like you all will meet at night mm -hmm. but like they are on a boat but still under a tree so like like i said before you all may like a tree will be a significant element in your relationship we also have the number 46 four like i said is the number of when i said four in another reading so four is basically the number of stability a strong foundation um and like like the roots of this tree it also means like going deep and creating a very solid structure so your relationship is going to be very 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 solid like the bark of this tree and even this tree 6 is the number of balance unconditional love reciprocity reciprocity however you pronounce it mm -hmm. so very good communication and that's already apparent in the way they've written their letter to you mm -hmm. now this card is going to just again give us a little more insight about this union and this connection but um these cards come with a little book that gives a back story about the flower and then its meaning so i'm going to just read that from the book but here the flower is trumpet genitian gentian i don't know how to gentian power and healing to get what you love you first have to be patient with what you have unknown Okay so I'm going to just read the meaning from the book and we're going to try and extrapolate and extract as much information we have about this connection from there So um the gentian flower takes its name from Gentius the king of Illyria According to legend Hungary was suffering the ravages of a long devastating plague In desperation the king shot an arrow into the air hoping it would guide him to a cure for his ailing subjects the arrow landed in the heart of a gentian plant which indeed provided a cure for the plague today the gentian plant which grows in alpine mountain areas is still valued for its medicinal properties as well as its attractiveness it takes several years for the plants to reach maturity thus the small but sturdy flowers associated with extended process of healing Okay so um Hungary could be an important place also it says here alpine mountain region so i don't know where alpine mountain regions are um but where there are mountains there are trees and especially alpine tree so this tree that you all meet could be an alpine tree but also here it says it's still valued for its medicinal properties as well as well as its attractiveness so although this connection may seem very beautiful and attractive on the surface or this person also 
they have a lot of healing a lot of depth a lot of empathy to them maybe they are even doctors because of like the medicinal thing mm -hmm. but that is just some extra messages i'm getting but i just like um on the surface it may look beautiful but there is so much more to it than what meets the eye is what i'm trying to say and it's what this message is also trying to say and now the inspirational message from this card is that in your desire to heal and grow summon your strength not through will but in patient acceptance of the process that is required to bring true recovery so i think what this means to say is that also trust the process so if you have not met this person yet trust divine timing trust the universe trust your manifestations or trust your network because that's how i feel like you guys are going to come together but trust the universe trust divine timing it's going to bring you guys together and the other meaning i wanted to say is that he does i the word heal and grow is coming up a lot so grow obviously i associate it with the tree because a tree takes a really long time to grow from like being a sapling to like actually becoming a solid big tree and the word healing is making me think that like i said you know when i was writing this letter i automatically came in a really good mood so it's like when you're with them you know um they are going to have this therapeutic healing effect on you like you're constantly going to be laughing with them so even if like you know you have your own shit to deal with maybe something to do with your career or maybe something to do with your education maybe something happening in your family when you're spending time with them they're going to put you in a good mood they're going to make you feel good about life which in a way is a way of healing like they're going to make you laugh and everybody says that the best medicine is laughter so even if they're not doctors or they're not in like a healing kind of career path or like studying medicine or something it just that their way their perception their personality is very healing and fun and makes you feel good makes you feel reassured and maybe that's why they're so popular you know maybe that's why like they're so people like them so much and that's why they are like so social because they get invited a lot because people feel good being around them people feel healed inevitably or not so yeah oh uh, this this card is going to just give us a little more insight about this union so we have confidence is your key to success new moon in leo so like i said you know they have this sense of confidence about them but i think this also applies to you I don't know when the new moon in Leo is but I will look it up and I will add it as a little note although this video is not really telling us about how you're going to meet your person or even when but still I'll just add it but basically confidence is the key to success what this makes me feel is that just the way they have this casual confidence about them like they don't doubt it that you know you know it's them coming through to you if you like somebody and you feel like they are the one be confident about it mhm mm but also being with them is going to boost your confidence but basically um i think when you all come together or when you are about to come together your confidence would like uh level up will go through some kind of up leveling or like when you all meet each other you all will be very confident of each other because you all will have that ability to instill that confidence in one another like this is something very real and you will be very confident about this relationship so i don't want to take any names but i had this one friend who was to get married last to last year but for some reason whenever she talked to me on the phone or when i met her in person and she would talk about like her marriage her impending nuptials and her future spouse and her life with that person i could feel a very shakiness in it you know like she was not even sure when it's going to happen how it's going to go through even though she was looking at wedding venues with her parents and everything and like putting down deposits and stuff she was so not confident about her life moving forward or like what her married life would be and i think it gave her a lot of anxiety but with you everything will be very sure shot 
it will be very easy to feel that way because they will make you feel that way you will make them feel that way and you all will have a lot of confidence and faith in this connection in this relationship so it's like with the solid foundation it's because you all bring so much confidence to each other like you all know that you all can rely on each other very heavily in this situation or in this connection mm -hmm. okay so now we are going to look at your tarot cards to just get some more insight so this one is going to tell us about their current energy this one is going to tell us about their energy at the time of meeting you and this is going to tell us about the energy of your connection with them i'm going to just put these two aside so the current energy is justice oh um, yeah the energy at the time of meeting you is six of pentacles and oh wow the energy of your connection is two of cups which basically means soulmates but i'll just go with this step by step so with justice justice basically uh, means libra so like i said before this person could very well be an air sign and i think libra goes very well with the personality because libras are very easy going outgoing fun loving they love having fun in life you know they are very easy going laid back they have like a good personality i mean everybody has a good personality but like there's something different about libras i think they're very open and easy to talk to like they don't have so many inhibitions they don't have such a enlarged ego in ways i know somebody who's a libra and they are like some of the most easy a uh, fun people to talk about under the sun talk with not about uh huh like i love having conversations with that person but coming to the meaning of this card uh justice makes me think like something is happening in their life currently that is turning around for the good for the better something happening in their favor like something they've put a lot of work and energy into like they've shown up done the work proved their point and now it's like they're getting their justice so maybe because like they're getting what they deserve some justice is being served to them some justice is being done to them it's up level their confidence because like when good things happen to you you automatically feel more confident and invincible right you feel optimistic about the future so i think that is why they're bursting with so much optimism but don't get me wrong they've had to work really hard they've had to put in the work they've had to show up for work they've had to prove their point they've had to like put their case across very systematically very organized maybe spend many sleepless nights because the bat is a symbol of night time you know they've had to pay very close attention to detail and stuff and that's how justice is being served to them something is coming around in their favor and that's making them very happy it could mean something to do with career maybe they are getting the recognition and justice they deserve maybe they are graduating with honors you know um maybe they are getting that med medical license that they've always wanted or maybe they have actually won some case in court or something maybe something they were fighting for for years or maybe they are a lawyer and they won a case for somebody else and like that's giving them a lot of confidence like they're doing really well for themselves something is turning around that is benefiting them a lot and that's making them very happy that's giving them that confidence something is coming in alignment for them that's making them feel so good about life but even then i have to say that even if like bad things would have happened to them or have happened with them they've always had such an optimistic outlook to life that they are very cheerful even in bad moments like some people don't see their problems as problems they have a very optimistic view and they are like are don't worry about it we'll get through it like if supposing i get a bad blood test result or something i become so panicky and anxious and i'm depressed for like a whole month i'm always worried like oh my god will i have to do treatment oh my god that whole process of going to the hospital blah 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 
But they are like, oh yeah, we'll get through it. Yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah, I'm fighting a legal thing about my property or whatever. But the way they see it, they don't see it as problems. So they have a very optimistic view. But something, maybe their optimism has attracted this victory. But whatever it is, it's coming around in their favor. Okay, so um, coming to the Six of Pentacles. This is the energy at the time of meeting you. So the Six of Pentacles always reminds me of like sharing, reciprocity, good communication, unconditional love. So at the time of meeting you, um, they will want to share everything with you. Like how this little, um, what's this animal? I keep forgetting. Ross had dressed up as this person. Armadillo. Armadillo. This little armadillo is like sharing all the pentacles he has in his basket. So um, this means like they can share in the capacity that they have. So like um, they'll want to share everything they have with you. Whether it's actually money, food or even like, you know, just sharing, like opening up to you. They'll want to share as much as they can, whatever's within their capacity. Because obviously this armadillo can only give what's there in this person's basket. They can't give you what's beyond the basket, right? If the basket empties, then like they have nothing to share. But whatever they have, they want to share it with you. So like supposing they go to buy an ice cream, they'll always want to get one for you. If like they meet you and you want to get real and deep. They're going to share life experiences of theirs as well. They're not just going to be like open to listening to you. Sometimes people say that in order to get people to open up, you have to share a little bit about yourself. So they'll be more than happy to do it. And not just to extract or like get you to open up to them, but because they just want to share with you. They want to be real with you. Like this person is going to have like no secrets about them when it comes to you mm -hmm. and with the number six like i said before unconditional love sharing you know um giving you everything they have good communication lots of love um if my stand moves or something it's probably because of my dog she's in my room with you with me tonight and she's just gotten up from her bed and she's being restless so she might just like move around and stuff if you hear a low howl or you hear scratching like I just did or like you know her, she just shaking then that's like my dog. So yeah. Mm -hmm. But basically they love okay so she's moved. I hope she doesn't bang on the door. So they love but yeah basically um. This is what it makes me think. Six, the number of, I'm sorry, I was distracted before. But like unconditional love, good communication, sharing, having a very good give and take. And because like they are being so open and honest and sharing with you, you're going to be the same with them. So it's going to be a very easy flow of like talk and joke and sharing of your life and sharing of things. So it's like, you know, maybe you all will even share finances. And unlike other people where, you know, it's like people get stressed out to sit on the table and talk about it. Like, okay, I'll take this bill. With you guys, it will be very easy. It will be very easily to decide. Like, you all can actually sit on a table and talk about anything through. You know, um, it won't be a stress. It won't, like, create, cause tension between you all. Mm -hmm. And what they give, they get back. What you give, you get back. And that's how it's going to be when you all meet. You know, it's going to be very seamless. Like sometimes, like I have friends who ask me to do tarot readings. And a lot of them have the same thing to say that I'm always the one reaching out. I'm always the one texting first. With you, it's not going to have like, there's not going to be any clash of egos. If, you know, you text this, this one time. They're going to text you the next two times and then you'll text back. So it's like not be like, you know, ego is not going to be an issue. Like it's going to be very seamless and it's going to be very balanced. And also with like the justice card and like the weighing scale. A lot of balance is like celebrated in this connection and this union. It's going to be a very balanced thing. And even like in the six of pentacles in the traditional tarot, there is a weighing scale because like, 
it's like this merchant is like weighing what he has and then distributing it equally amongst like the two beggars in the picture so like there's going to be a lot of equidistribution a lot of balance in this relationship and you're going to feel it from the instant you meet them like no qualms no ego like oh my god why am i reaching out why am i always initiating plans and even if they are doing it at the start it's not going to hurt their ego they are doing it because they want to or even if you are reaching out to them it's not going to hurt your ego you are doing it because you just like to mm -hmm. and now coming to the last card which is the two of cups uh the two of cups basically means finding your soulmate it basically means finding your partner finding your reflection in somebody else in terms of work marriage or even like a soulmate basically it means like finding your soulmate where the heart and the soul meets you know finding your connection finding yourself in somebody else somebody who can mirror you somebody who can understand you through and through so i guess these two cards not just like build up or like create a precedence of what your relationship is going to be like but once you'll get together it's going to be like a divine union of sorts and that also like because like this reiterates the whole soul tree soul family thing it also makes me think like maybe this is somebody you have known for many many generations and that is why your your relationship the foundation or the roots of your relationship are so long and so deep rooted because like maybe you all have known each other for many lives and that's how you all like know each other so well through and through that's why your communication is so good that's why your balance is so good so maybe in past lives you all have had like come across these hurdles in your relationship but all that is smoothing out in this one because i don't see much negativity the only negative thing about libras i think are um I think they are a little short tempered and little impulsive but it will go away in like a second because they don't hold on to grudges so if they are mad about something they are not going to hold on to it for like being mad about it for like next time and the time after that they forgive as easily but also it's not necessarily a person could be a libra they could have it in their birth chart somewhere sun moon or rising but they could very well be another sign as well i'm leaning more towards a air signs because i feel like the personality of this person matches an air sign but like i said my mom is a gemini so they could be a gemini libra or even an aquarius uh huh but yeah coming back to the two of cups it's basically a soul connection lot of balance lot of love and two is the number of soulmates finding your perfect partner so it's going to be a very harmonious relationship good communication lots of love and cups denote emotion so a lot of love lot of empathy lot of feeling so like i said at the beginning or while reading the letter on the surface of it it be looks like you guys are having so much fun going out but there's still a lot of empathy a lot of love beneath that stuff other people don't see mhm mm lot of depth lot of connection mhm mm and lot of sharing of like burdens and problems like i said six is the number of sharing equal distribution taking up responsibility communicating well and having a very harmonious and balanced life so yeah that's what i see your future as now for the last part of this reading we are going to look at the last two cards which is your love and relationship cards i'm going to just talk about what your relationship is going to be like or like what aspects of your relationship are important i know i have done not one but two readings on this topic but these cards are so cute i just felt drawn i just felt called to draw them so i just did and i thought two were enough so we have giving which again goes with six of pentacles but i welcome the idea of give and take in my relationships and i eagerly practice the give part by giving freely i discover just how much fun giving really is giving my time care and attention to someone else actually gives me good feelings which makes me want to give even more wait a second does this selflessness make me look selfish be honest like i said these cards are so cute but basically this just iterates what we were talking about earlier 
Y'all will have a very easy way of giving each other, very smooth way, whether it's time, whether it is care, whether it is actually giving physical stuff. And it won't involve ego. So just because you gave something twice or you were the initiator or you gave, gave, gave at the beginning, it won't hurt your ego. It will, you will want to do it because you want to do it. Because it makes you happy. And the second card is appreciation. Appreciate the unique ways other people show their love rather than compare their ways with my ways. Then I appreciate myself for maturely putting up with people who just can't seem to show love the normal, obvious, universally accepted way. Good job, both of us. <laughs> so, a lot of appreciation, but also something unconventional, perhaps. But basically, like I said, a lot of love, a lot of affection, a lot of appreciation. And with the Six of Pentacles, what goes around comes around. What you give is what you receive. So if you're giving appreciation, you're going to get that much more back, you know. So yeah, giving and appreciation. Those are two important elements in your relationship moving forward. So um, those are all the messages I have for you, Pile 3. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it made you happy. I hope it gave you some clarity and reassurance and some insight about your future spouse. I hope their letter made you feel hopeful and happy. Um, if it did do any of the above, please do consider liking this video, sharing it with those who you think it may help or those who like want a similar kind of message from their future spouse or any similar kind of reassurance. Um, besides that, please do consider commenting with what resonated, what didn't. And finally, subscribing to my channel if you want to do that because that would really help me. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Hi, so if you guys chose the fourth letter or like this flower design, then this is going to be your reading. This is going to be your channel letter from your future spouse. So how this reading is going to work is that we're going to first open up this letter, um, read it and then try and get some key points or like get some insight about this person and this union and your connection. Then we're going to move on to some oracle cards that are going to talk about that give us more insight about this union and this connection. Um, maybe even a little bit like how or who this person is, how you're going to meet, uh, maybe even when. Then we're going to move on to your tarot cards that are going to just give us an idea or an insight about your future spouse's current energy their energy at the time of meeting you and then the energy of your union and your connection or like your relationship and then we're going to end this reading with two cards from the affirmators love and relationship deck that just gives us an idea of what your relationship is going to be like or any key aspects or elements about your relationship so let's just begin with the letter so we'll open it up and read it okay so I'm going to just read it. It starts with my heart. There's nothing more fulfilling in my life than knowing I get to spend it with you. To grow with you and to evolve into the person worthy of you. I never imagined that I would meet someone as wonderful as you. Someone who could love me so wholly and teach me to love again. And for that reason, I don't think I've ever been able to love anyone as much as I love you. It is both a beautiful and terrifying feeling. Beautiful because I get to love you. Terrifying because what if I mess up? Somewhere deep down, you saw and unnoted the version of me that even I didn't know existed. And for that, I am so grateful. And I promise you, every day for the rest of my life, I will work hard to be that version for you. The version of me only you saw. The version of me you deserve. I love you and thank you so much. So honored to be your future spouse. Okay, so this was a pretty intense letter. Um, unlike pile 3, when I wrote this letter, um, I felt a lot of heaviness while writing it. You know, like maybe like this person was crying. Um, it felt like they're pouring a lot into it. They're trying really hard to be open and vulnerable with you. And they don't mind it. They don't mind like, you know, showing you their wounds. 
and speaking of wounds i also got the fact fact that they are, to some extent they are wounded beings like maybe they've been hurt and scarred in the past and this line especially i never imagined that i would meet someone as wonderful as you someone who could love me so wholly and teach me to love again so it's like for them it's so hard to believe that somebody could actually love them for who they are their open wounds and their vulnerabilities and their mistakes and all taken into consideration and the fact that your love to them healed them in a way that it opened them up to love again so maybe in some ways you know they've had some experience in the past where they felt like you know i can never love again or it's like discouraged them or tarnished their trust in the concept of love in certain ways but you came along and opened it up the fact that you could love them so unconditionally so wholly and you know love them knowing about their past or their wounds or whatever they've been through and see their stuff and love it is what in a way has like baffled them like they didn't know a love like this could exist so um i'm going to get to it because i feel like we have to dwell a little bit into this person's past but if you have to just continue examining this letter then um it's both beautiful and terrifying feeling beautiful because i get to love you terrifying because what if i mess up so this is somebody who deals with like who is dealing with a little lack of self confidence like maybe they they tend they have a tendency to take a blame for a lot of things like they always feel like when something goes wrong it's somehow their fault like you know they have been like burdened with a lot of guilt in the past and that's why i think it's like scared them like this person is too good for me like what if i fuck up what if i mess it up what they don't realize is that you will love them knowing that there is a possibility that they will make mistakes and you love them knowing that you know mistakes are okay because like in all relationships mistakes do happen some people decide to end things but some people decide to like work through it and move on you know some like people are not built or like you know um born with a manual on how to be a proper person or a proper spouse or a proper husband or a proper wife or a proper mom you know it's something you learn along the way and for them it's like maybe in the past if they made a mistake they were punished severely so that's why they're so scared you know maybe you know when you meet this person they may be very very hesitant also you know to like even enter into a relationship because like not because you know they are so wounded or whatever but the idea that they will mess up scares them more you know so like this reminds me of this one thing a long time back i wrote a poem and uh, i have this friend like you know we have like these writer friends and poet friends and i told her that should i send it to like places to get it published so she was like why not so i was so afraid of sending it and i told her this that i'm so scared that you know i'll mess up my cover letter that they'll not even read my poem so she's like your poem is what you want to get published but you're not even scared of the rejection you're reject you're scared of like even putting a cover letter to like the editor of this magazine or that magazine or that online website how are you going to move ahead if you don't take that chance write a cover letter if you feel like you've made grammatical errors or something let me have a look at it or something but just do it i didn't end up doing it because my fear got the better of me and also i wanted to write three four poems before i could just send one sappy one and i wasn't even that confident about my poem so i didn't send it but basically that's the thing they're so scared that they want to like back off before even trying until they meet you because you're so inviting you're so forgiving and they're like when they meet you they're like what mistakes are okay what i can screw up and this person can like help me get through it they'll be like so baffled they're so baffled and actually that's how like love is but they've had such a one sided relationship when it came to like one sided view when it came to love and relationships 
that the idea of like having somebody else open up or be so forgiving and accepting of them baffles them you know and that's why like because you know in a way you're healing them and you're loving them they're so grateful to you like for them love and gratitude is so intertwined like they feel indebted to you they feel so grateful to have you you know um they're like what would i have done if this person didn't come into my life i probably would have been single forever so um they have this woundedness about them maybe at the time of meeting you they would be like a better person and a better version or something but before or at least now maybe but like their past relationship has left them wounded um also it says here and i promise you every day for the rest of my life i will work hard to be that version for you and they are constantly talking about being worthy enough for you so obviously um according to them they have to work a lot harder to become like the person worthy of you so i definitely feel like something has happened in their past either they've had like a very bad relationship before uh maybe even like a nasty divorce or maybe like their upbringing has been in a very unhappy household that their idea on and concept of marriage is very warped so maybe like they are like now that like they are getting out of that and they're trying to like rediscover what a real marriage and what the world really is and like seeing people being happy seeing people having a good sense of communication seeing people being forgiving is very foreign to them they are just coming into this so it's like i have to relearn how to be a normal and happy person and that is something like they feel like unless i can achieve that or i can like become this person or like work on myself to like you know empty out all the shit that i've learned in the past and like fill myself up with all the good stuff and the positivity and make myself a more worthy person is when they want to be with you so maybe in your case like pile 1 even your union may have been delayed or also you may be of like a little more mature audience like maybe this is like your second marriage or their second marriage to you in a way so yeah just wanted to bring that to your notice mhm mm oh uh, is there anything else that i want to unload from this also the version of me only you saw the fact that you could love me so wholly and conditionally so the fact is like you know they had lost faith that even they had any shred of goodness or anything worthy of love like maybe you know at this time like they were very cynical about life or like they were like oh god i don't believe in marriage it's all for losers or like it's always going to end in a tragedy or something but like you came along and you're like but there's something so amazing about you you have so much empathy you actually have so much love that you've like you know just put a cap over but if you open that up it can be so wonderful so like you came along and saw a version of them that they probably suppressed for so long that they almost considered it dead in them but you came along and you revived it and you saw it and that's the kind of version they're trying to come into being and that's what's taking them a bit of time or that's like the person they want to be when they're around you mhm mm but yeah i got a very vulnerable wounded heavy feeling from this person so like maybe like you know they've closed their flood gates when it comes to like being emotional but when they open it they are all in it pours out mm -hmm. they could be very emotional beings as well so maybe like their water signs i'm not sure but they have a lot of emotion to them and they are very grateful for you to you for like understanding that putting up with it and seeing the beauty in it rather than judging them or like calling them out for it which has happened in the past like maybe in the past when they tried to open up they were shut down or they were shunned or like their their feelings were like dismissed 
and that's why they are so scared it's happened like lots of people have grown up in unhappy households and unhappy parents and they've grown up to like suppress that innocent happy version of them that they were born with and then they've become like this hard shell like person and that hard shell like person has gone ahead and like married and stayed like hard shell like and then maybe they had a wonderful husband or wife but because they had created such a hard wall they their spouse couldn't like break through or get through and that's how the marriage crumbled but you came through and you got through them and they are actually grateful that you broke that wall of like that wall that wall of cynicism and that hard exterior that they had mm -hmm. okay so now we're going to move on to your oracle cards in order to get a better idea of this connection or even this person so the first card we have is um expansion with the number 44 so double fours means a lot of stability this number four has been following me around for a while now you know it's just it's showing up i think it showed up in one four has showed up in all the readings so far but 44 um could be an age it could be an important number maybe an area code uh maybe a street or something but 4 and 4, 4 is the number of stability, solid foundations, a very groundedness, a very something that has a very deep rooted thing. So this connection is going to be very deep, very solid. It's going to have a very strong foundation. We're coming to the meaning of this card expansion. Um, like I said before in this envelope that you unordered a version of them that... Um, even they didn't know existed and I think by expansion it's like you've made them see beyond expand their vision beyond like this limited vision or idea they had about love and life and in a way it's like expanded them to realize that no things are done in a different way that marriage can be about mistakes and forgiveness and learning to grow and like you know grow together move on together and look at life together change of perception and in some ways maybe you even expanded they've expanded even your vision like maybe you didn't even realize that as a person you could be actually so forgiving so open so accepting of people mm -hmm. so i think both of y'all are going to really expand each other's perceptions and visions in this connection besides that expansion also means like expanding your horizons so y'all may like have a good career together expand your business it could also mean like expand in terms of a family so this is somebody you can very well settle down with because like number 44 so repeating fours um four is the number of solid foundation growth so this is somebody you can definitely have like a large and happy family with and repeating force equals to eight and eight is the number of abundance. So maybe you guys will actually have a very happy and abundant life together because um, I don't know, like the fact that in order to like grow, you have to expand your vision and the fact that you all are teaching each other to grow your perceptions and see beyond is like telling me that because you know you guys are like seeing beyond you come up with these unique ideas you see things that other people don't and you use that to your advantage and that in in a way benefits you in terms of abundance so maybe not always like financial abundance but just happiness enriching your lives but yeah it could very well mean even financial abundance mm -hmm. The next card we have is uh, the union of hearts. A love connection defies explanation. <laughs> and look at the imagery like these two trees making out. But definitely this is something that you know y'all will just have a heart to heart connection with. And we have the number 28 here. 
So 28 could be a date, it could be an age. Um, 28 could also be like 2028 a year. So like if you guys are like young or something, then maybe that's when you'll get married or meet your spouse or something. But I don't want to like, <laughs> that's six years down the line. So I don't want to go that far. But yeah, it could be anything. Uh, the union of hearts. But like this connection is going to feel like your hearts are in union with each other. Like in a way, a soulmate connection also. The way you'll connect... It will be like you'll never believed y'all could click in such a way. And I think that gets reiterated from here. I never imagined that I would meet someone as wonderful as you. So it's like beyond what y'all expected, beyond what y'all imagined. And here it says, a love connection defies explanation. So maybe like y'all never even thought that, you know, this could ever work out or this could be so wonderful or like this could be my person. And then it happened. Another... Another interpretation could be like maybe for the outside world you came across as like very opposites like who thought they would end up together and then you all did. But obviously none of that matters because you all just love each other so much and this connection is so deep. Two is the number of partnerships, balance and eight again is the number of abundance. So together you are, you are going to feel very abundant, very fulfilled. Like y'all don't need anything more in life but each other. And if y'all have each other, you'll feel like solid teammates. Like it's us against the world kind of a feeling. So like this also makes me think like supposing you know they are down. You're always there to cheer them up. When you're down, they are always there to cheer you up. And y'all are each other's biggest cheerleaders, biggest supporters. You know, happy for them when good things happen, holding their hand when something sad happens. And the same applies to you. But yeah, that's what I see. The third, this card is going to just give us some more information about this person. Maybe a little bit of like where they are from and stuff. Um, each of these cards come with a little message uh, a little backstory from the book and then an in inspirational message that explains the meaning of the cards. I'm going to just read it from the book because that's where it's like explained better. And like you get a lot of facts and stuff which we can like use to decipher who this person is, where they are from and stuff like that. So the flower is hibiscus and the meaning is beauty and happiness. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. John Keats. John Keats was somebody I studied in college and... He was one of the most romantic poets and he died at the age of 25, I think, of consumption. And at the time of his death, he died thinking he had failed as a romantic poet. And after he died, his poems kind of skyrocketed. And a lot of people were under the false pretense or false notion that his love towards Fanny Braun was unrequited but it was not it was a two-way stream she loved him back equally but he died so young what was she to do so she ultimately married some other dude and all the letters that they kept that he had sent her she kept each and one of those letters and after he died and he became famous posthumously you know in a state of like financial strain she ultimately auctioned off and sold those letters in order to make money, in order to be able to survive. But the main thing, like the movie Bright Star, or even like his life, lots of people thought that their love was unconditional. My own literature teacher, who's a doctor, who's got a doctorate in literature, thought that their love was unconditional. And then when I pointed it out to her, she was like, oh, you know, you know better, why don't you may write a paper on it? So I wrote a paper and I proved my point that their love was not, un it was not unrequited. It was definitely a two-way stream, but he died thinking he had failed as a poet. And I think, and he died also sad and depressed, which is kind of like a feeling I get from this poem. So this person feels like, you know, they're not good enough. Um, they don't have those emotions in them. They don't have a proper perception of what marriage 
and life is supposed to be but you come along and you see them for what they truly are you see them for their talent you see them for the amount of empathy and love they have actually inside of them like fanny brown did for john keats and uh, and because it resonates and because it connects i thought i should mention it so it does remind me a bit of a john keats and fanny brown kind of relationship um anyway so i'm going to just read it from the book so the hibiscus this is like the origin of this flower the hibiscus is known as the queen of tropical islands giving a woman a hibiscus is considered a flattering way to acknowledge her beauty if a woman wears the flower behind her left ear that means she is looking for love that could be advice for some of you if she wears it behind her right ear it means she is spoken for in the victorian language of flowers the hibiscus means delicate beauty today it is an outward expression of joy so um if i have to extract meaning from this tropical islands could be an important place like places where there's sun and heat so tropical places is where you may meet your spouse where they are from maybe where you are from um giving a woman a hibiscus is considered a flattering way to acknowledge her beauty so um i guess in a way it's like you know you are acknowledging the good and the beauty in them and they are acknowledging it in you mhm mm uh in the victorian language of flowers the hibiscus means delicate beauty so like i said there's something very vulnerable and fragile about them so you're seeing the beauty in their fragility and in their vulnerability which even they can't see but you're seeing it so in a way i feel like you know um they are the hibiscus and you're seeing the beauty within them today it is an outward expression of joy which just tells me that like the union of hearts when you all do get together it's going to feel like a very joyous connection like like in a way a new start like i never thought i could feel so much happiness and so much love emanating from some of such from such a person towards me you know so i think when you all find each other you all will find a lot of happiness despite of like their current situation or like what they've been through or even your situation the inspirational messages celebrate the beauty within you and all around you you will attract happiness into your life when your message to the universe is clear seek joy so i guess in many ways this means like you know um see the beauty that is around you and when you start to appreciate what is around you you start attracting more of it so if you have been trying to manifest this person or this person has been trying to manifest you ah uh, you have to be clear with your message to the universe because that's what it says here and the thing about the law of attraction is the minute you start giving you get back so if you're going to like look at the world with a very cynical outlook then you're going to meet people who are cynical and sad but if you start to look at the world with a happy outlook or like start to see the world for its beauty then you attract people of beauty and i think they have a lot of beauty within them they just don't see it but when you attract them into your life you'll see it for what it is and in order to attract them into your life you have to first start seeing the beauty around so i think it's both an inspirational message and also a piece of advice and the same could be for them like maybe they are losing hope you know they are seeing the world in a very cynical limited view point but when they start to see the world and they see the beauty in it that's when they attract you and you being this beautiful person sees the beauty within them mhm mm so yes now this card is going to just give us a little more insight about your union it could also mean advice or it could just be a message unto itself but let's have a look so we have don't let pride get in your way full moon in leo so i think this is pretty straightforward what this means is that there could be times in this relationship especially initially if like supposing you reach out to them and they don't respond or like they reach out to you and you don't respond and then suddenly it's like a hurt of ego 
don't let that get to you they probably are not responding because they are going through something maybe they are genuinely busy maybe they are dealing with some shit but it's not because they don't like you or they are being aloof for anything so don't let that go to your head also the second interpretation i have is that because you're being there for them don't let that also go to your head like don't have so much pride that because you were with them and you supported them and you gave them your shoulder to cry on and stuff that you can like be proud of it do it unconditionally do it out of love don't do it out of pride or something and um we have full moon in leo so leo could be an important zodiac sign um i think leos are pretty emotional even though they don't show it but their fieriness gives them that emotional side to them i feel mhm mm i'll look up when full moon in leo is and i will mention it as a little note over here in case we want to use it for like in case it it's like an important indication of like when you are meeting your person this video is not ideally to talk about when and how you're going to meet your person because there's a whole different video dedicated to that but just as an extra thing i will mention it okay so now we have your tarot cards this one is going to talk about their current energy this is going to talk about the energy at the time of meeting you and this is going to talk about their energy the energy of your union or like what your connection is going to be like okay so um the current energy their energy at the time of meeting you this card has been following me around it's come at least once i think in three readings in three piles and we have the fool as the energy of your union or the energy of your relationship this is the energy of your union sorry so um the seven of wands this basically reminds me of like feeling cornered feeling victimized like pushed into a corner because like this one person is fighting so many different things and like they are trying to ward off like six of these when they just have one in their hand so a lot of like a lot of conflict right now i think they are dealing with a lot of conflict a lot of anger a lot of pain a lot of like the feeling of being ganged up upon um victimized like shoved into a corner and not seeing like how they can get out which i think goes in tandem with their letter because like i told you i felt a woundedness from them and um it's like i think this is what's scaring them to think that you know i get to love you terrifying because what if i mess up because like because they are like shoved into this corner and they have been ganged up upon they feel they are made to feel like everything is like their fault so maybe their current situation is what triggers them into becoming this cynical pessimistic lack of confidence a uh, guilt taking person but it's like because they're shoved into a corner and they have to like defend themselves so much and they have to ward off and fight away all this stuff but having said that the seven of wands also means like are you taking responsibility for your actions are you understanding where you went wrong are you you know trying to rectify the mistakes you have made you know it it also means like you know acting like a victim when it's not always necessary you know working through things feeling anger and jealousy towards other people for the littlest of things but you know given that the seven of wands makes me think of like a lot of frustration the fact is that maybe they're dealing with a situation that's frustrating them so much the fact that they're being cornered that they have no choice but to like get angry at the drop of a hat because like they've reached their boiling point and some more like they're fighting of too much maybe they've had too much to chew on before like they've had too much on their plate then they can even handle and now they're dealing with it all this could be like a current marriage a current relationship or even like a divorce situation that's like turning out to be difficult and nasty it could also mean a very difficult childhood like you know dealing with like seeing their parents be in a very unhappy abusive relationship 
and like you know feeling scared at the idea of marriage you know feeling scared to like be in a codependent relationship in a way or like being in a relationship that is balanced and loving because they've never seen it they've never known it so they don't even know or realize it exists but now they're exploring and discovering that it does exist in the world and because they've realized that they've had the raw end of the deal or like you know they've been unlucky or like they've been shown the wrong side of life now they're fighting it off they're like you screwed me up now i have to deal with it so in a way they are taking responsibility for their action like they are realizing that they are screwed up or like their mind is warped or their perceptions are warped on the topic but they are also you know um exerting a lot of blame on external factors which they are trying to ward off and hence they are like becoming a victim and other people if if their parents were understanding in the beginning itself they probably would not expose them to the amount of violence and unhappiness that they did but if they didn't take responsibility then they are not going to take it now and trying to exert and put that guilt on them is not going to make them feel better and that's in- inevitably frustrating them a lot because the people who have been responsible in screwing them up are not taking that responsibility and that's the kind of conflicting i'm going around in circles and not reaching a clear point is what's like frustrating them even more so right now they're dealing with a lot of frustration lot of conflict lot of victimization dealing with a lot of shit warding off a lot of shit and working through a lot of shit so that present is probably not the best but they are working through it like they are going to ultimately come to the realization because like they say um to grow with you and evolve into the person worthy of you so they are taking responsibility they are going to ultimately understand their fault in a situation and learn to push through and become a better version like i don't have to be like how my dad was or i don't have to be like how my mom was i can be a much better spouse to my future spouse you know i can be like my neighbor's spouse like they are such a happy marriage so you know that's they are working through it and also you and i promise you every day for the rest of my life i will work hard to be that version for you maybe even they were very responsible in the crumbling of their past marriage or their past relationship maybe they have things that they have to deal with maybe they've had their own flaws it could be anything but whatever it is they are realizing it and they are accepting it and they are working through it that's the main thing because lots of people don't even like to take on responsibility or see the errors in their ways but these people are seeing it maybe you showed it to them or maybe they came to know it on its own and you accepted them flaws and all and saw a version of them that is much better that is much more evolved that is much more healed than what they are right now and that's the person they are working to become mhm that's what they are telling you in the letter that i'm working hard to become the person worthy of you worthy of the love you've shown me and given me moving on to the two of cups this is the energy at the time of meeting you so this is a very drastic difference between this The two of cups is basically a jackpot card to get in like relationship readings because the two of cups is like finding your soulmate finding somebody who mirrors you somebody who really connects with you and how like you know their tails are intertwined and holding these cups and there are these beating hearts and the way these two seahorse are looking at each other it makes me think like they're really going to have this very deep connection with you it's going to be so beautiful and so amazing that everybody is going to be like what i wish they had what they had i wish i had what they had and you know like i said at the start it says that your connection may defy explanation 
so you don't owe it to anybody to explain anything and maybe at the start people will be like what wow, these those two got together they are the most unlikely couple but um but because your connection is so strong because you are where you know your heart meets their heart your heart meets your soul and you'll find like you'll find each other in each other and you'll understand each other in ways that other people just could not imagine um you don't give a damn about what the world says you know that's the kind of feeling i'm getting but basically the two of cups is soulmate vibes it's like unconditional love great communication reciprocity um unlimited love a lot of balance a lot of harmony and finding your partner in like love marriage work also and like with the expansion and the abundance i mentioned before there is a possibility you might meet this person through work aha uh -huh. and together you all will like grow and become like very successful but also become very good partners at home very successful spouses to each other mhm mm and now i and like with the amount of water there'll be a lot of emotional flow so you all will be able to express your emotions and feelings towards each other very easily so supposing they do something that makes you feel bad you won't have to suppress it and bottle it up and keep it inside you can very vocalize it and tell them that hey you know what i didn't like that you interrupted me the other day or whatever or hey i didn't like how you how you introduced me to your friends or to your family i would really appreciate it if you did it differently or like something so like you can be open about your feelings like you know it hurt my feelings or whatever and like i said before there is room for mistakes so as long as you know you don't punish them or reprimand them for the mistakes they make i think they are very eager to learn and move on because they want to grow and become the version of themselves that is worthy of you so your way of expressing emotions telling them how you all feel is going to be very easy and natural and seamless to one another and i think that is something you guys are going to feel instantly from the moment you meet like no inhibitions in that way no hiding no putting up a show but like being expressive to towards each other from the very beginning so i feel like in this relationship you might meet this person through work and like build a bond with them over like a project or something and then over time that would like that bond would like become would strengthen and it would like seep into becoming a romantic thing and because you all like have known each other it's easy for you all to like be open and honest with each other because like when you know your work colleagues so well or whatever you can at some point start talking about your family and all like not on day 1 or your past and because like they knew it originally in the capacity of your co-worker or your partner in work they know your history and because like initially your your interest in them was not romantic you didn't care about like how what they thought about you so you could be honest about your shit and they could be honest about their so you will have like this knowledge of each other's history and still accept each other that hey you know what maybe we've been work colleagues for so long and i know you've been through so much shit but we get along so well and i have developed these feelings for you why not make it romantic and then you know it becomes romantic and then you'll realize that actually you all are in a way each other's soul mates you all are each other's mirrors you all find each other in each other nobody understands you all the way you all do for each other you know if that makes sense anyway so moving on to the fool uh the fool is like the energy of your connection and the fool basically means the start of a brand new cycle the fool is also aquarius energy by the way so aquarius could be a zodiac sign in your so there's birth chart sun moon or rising or um february could be an important month but basically the fool means the start of a new chapter a new cycle is starting so when you all get married or like when you all decide to be each other's number ones and be there for each other and make this connection official and be each other's partners for life or whatever it's going to be like a new beginning 
it's gonna be like that for both of you the fool in the traditional tarot carries this little stick with a bundle so it means like you know um they have unburdened themselves of their past which means you already know their history but it's not something you'll carry forward you'll start on a fresh slate you know on a clean slate you're like eager for the adventure that lies ahead in the traditional tarot the fool also has a dog and they also have a rose in their hand so they're eager for love they're eager to feel that romanticism they're they're op happy and open to feeling that love just the way they mentioned here that i could not imagine that you could be so wonderful and you could love me so wholly and teach me to love again so they're very happy to love you and they truly do love you so they have that the rose in the fool's hand indicates that you know they're going to have this very romantic side towards you mm -hmm. and the dog means loyalty companionship for life oh wait there's a dog even over here the same dog kind of a thing is there in the fool you know it's like jumping and it's like eager for like the adventure that lies ahead so you all are very eager and excited for what your future and your life lies ahead mm -hmm. but like look at the amount of flowers and blooms with this flamingo so there's so much blossoming like you all are very eager to see what lies ahead what's blossoming and happy to see the beauty of the world together because like it mentioned in the letter you all are learning to see the beauty around you even like in the hibiscus that was the meaning right to see the beauty around you to appreciate what's around you so in each other's company you all will start to see the beauty in the sadness or like see the beauty despite the sadness better still but also see how beautiful and amazing life can be around you mhm mm uh the fool also had this you know this carefreeness to them so like you all are going to feel very lightweight together once you know your history is re revealed and you all are so accepting of each other and that's out of the way and you'll start life afresh you know you all going to feel this lightness and this enthusiasm that maybe is lost but like it's being unnothered and being um resurrected you're going to feel that again the fool could also mean like maybe you all move to a whole new place and start life afresh like maybe if you all were like born in one country together or something but like move into a whole new different country that could also very well be a meaning mm -hmm. and zero basically means like starting from ground level and moving upwards so it's going to be really like a fresh fresh start from grass level to upwards so like rebuilding your life together or oh, at least they are going to feel like it mhm mm uh now we are going to go to the last part of this reading which is looking at these affirmator love and relationship cards so this is just going to talk about what your relationship is going to be like with them i know i have done not one but two readings on the topic but these cards are so cute that i felt really called to draw them so i did um it's going to talk about two significant aspects or elements that are important in your relationship so the first one is listening i activate my receptive side and become an engaged intuitive professional grade listener supercharged listening gives me the ability to not only hear the words others are saying but also to perceive the emotions hiding between their words armed with this knowledge i'll be in great position to give them exactly what they need or if i prefer to dominate the planet so basically like i said you guys are going to really connect in a way and listen to each other so like listen to your problems like you listen to theirs they listen to yours and this is going to be listening because you want to hear them out because you want to know what happened in their life not listen for the sake of it and listen with respect and give them what they require in that moment and even feel the emotions they have felt so supposing they are talking about their past or like their sad childhood or their sad upbringing or like the shit they saw in their own house you will realize that the tears they are holding back or like how difficult they had it growing up and that's why they feel the way they do right now you will be able to read between the lines by listening to them and like 
not interrupting them so like this one time i was talking to my friend or at least i thought she was my friend about like some shit that was happening in my house and out of the blue she's like oh my god do you want to like go to jamie's pizzeria and like order a pizza and i was like is she even listening to me does she even care so this is going to be like the opposite of that they're going to really listen really care and really empathize when it's required so very good listeners to each other's shit but also listening to each other's perceptions each other's ideas each other's point of views and be very respectful of that and especially with the number 2 which is like balance and good communication you all will have a lot of a good concept of like hearing each other out understanding their point of view and even applying it not just dismissing it the second one we have is self worth i cast off all concerns about what people think of me i know i'm totally kick ass person and my kick assness can never be diminished by rejection so people can think what they think and feel what they feel in the meantime i'll just keep on knowing what i know about thinking about what they are thinking about what i already know i think wow okay this was confusing but basically if i was if i have to summarize I think both of your self words are going to like amplify in this connection because like I said before they talk a lot about becoming worthy and the fact that they found you who loves them for who they are makes them feel like you know I have something left in this world I have some self worth left left there is something worthy and loving about me and your self worth is going to really um grow in this connection you all are really going to amplify and make each other feel worthy and feel make each other feel loved you know so if you if they had a very low self worth and self esteem before meeting you in this new connection in this relationship with you especially with like this fresh start their self worth their self esteem is going to skyrocket maybe not like suddenly but especially over time they're going to start really feeling worthy of their presence of their existence because you make them feel so and they make you feel so okay um those are all the messages i have for you pile 4 i hope it made you feel better i hope it gave you reassurance about your future spouse i hope their letter to you made you feel nice gave you some reassurance of what is happening gave you some clarity of what lies ahead but besides that i just hope it made you feel good i just hope it brought you some semblance of happiness and if it did do any of the above then please to consider liking this video sharing it with those who you think it may help commenting with what resonated what didn't and finally subscribing to my channel because that would really help me and i'll see you in my next video bye bye